That's right. <laughs> it's everybody's best guess. I don't know. Color them may know the old, the old Testament pronunciation. Of oh, what? Oh, no, it might have oh, just any, of any of anything. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know the mics. Mike's are not Mike's are not here. Mike's are not here. They're not here. Legislative Health, Natural Resource Energy and Water Committee, and the Laura and uh, Land Agriculture. Mike's on. Test, test. Okay, thank you. Yes, Static, you have calm. All right, the Joint Legislative House, Natural Resource Energy and Water Committee, the Land and Agriculture Rural Affairs Committee, and the Senate Natural Resource Energy and Water Committee. Uh, committees are here today to hear from the public and make comments uh, and possible recommendation for the new proposed um, Grand Canyon uh, National Monument. So with that, uh, we've called the order for the House Natural Resource Energy and Water Committee. Uh, Representative Diaz, do you want to call your committee together? A uh, special meeting of the House, um, Andrew and Laura, and Senate Andrew committees is called to order. Senator Kerr. Yes, the special meeting of the House Natural Resource Energy and Water Committee, Land, Ag, and Rural Affairs, and the Senate Natural Resource Energy and Water Committee is called to order. Uh, the uh, staff, would you please note the attendance for the meetings? I would like to have introduce everybody that's here. Uh, would you introduce yourself, what your office is, and where you and who you represent? So, let's uh, start down at this end. Turn your mics on. You gotta press the button. All right. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Michael Carbone, LD25, which represents Buckeye and Yuma. Thank you for having us. 
Senator Frank Carroll from Legislative District 28, which is uh, the area that includes the TSMC plant that's being constructed down in the valley. Sun City West, a few other retirement communities down there as well. And um, I also serve on Natural Resources, Energy, Water, also on Commerce and uh, uh, Transportation and Technology as well. Thank you. Senator Gowan. Senator David Gowan, LD19 live in Sierra Vista and we have about five counties in our district. You have Cochise, Greenlee, Graham, Pima and Santa Cruz counties, size of Massachusetts. So that's pretty big. We know about these real issues. So thank you for having me here. Um, Senator Sonny Borelli, I'm the Senate Majority Leader, my legislative district number 30, which is Mojave, La Paz County, a little sliver of Maricopa County because of, they districted in uh, Wickenburg and little sliver of Yavapai, which is Wickenburg. And I'm proud to be here. Alexander Colladin, Legislative District 3. Uh, it includes uh, North Scottsdale, Cave Creek, part of Anthem, New River, Rio Verde, Rio Verde Foothills, and Fountain Hills. Uh, and in the House of Representatives, I serve on the uh, Energy, Natural Resources and Water Committee, the Judiciary Committee, and on the Elections and Municipal Oversight Committee, where I'm vice chair. Representative Pena. Hi, my name, my name is Michelle Pena. Turn it on. Got it. Hi, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Michelle Pena. I am District 23, and that serves four counties, Yuma, Pima, Pinal and Maricopa. So thank you for having me. Representative Diaz, um, uh, in District 19, it's uh, Cochise County, Graham, Greenlee, uh, part of Pima and part of uh, Santa Cruz. I'm a chairman of uh, uh, LORA, which is Land, Agriculture and Rural Affairs, also a part of the uh, Education Committee and Appropriations Committee. Thank you. Thank you, uh, TJ Shope, Legislative District 16, reside in Coolidge. Uh, the district is uh, a couple precincts in Maricopa County, about 70% of the population in Pinal County, and uh, the rest in Pima County. And I also serve as the President Pro Tem of the Senate and uh, on this committee as the Vice Chair of Natural Resources. I'm Sina Kerr, I serve in the Senate, and I represent Legislative District 25, which is the Buckeye area, west of Phoenix, and into Yuma as well. I serve as Chair of Natural Resources, Energy, and Water, and I also serve as Majority Whip. Thank you, I'm Representative Gail Griffin. I represent, uh, along with uh, Representative Diaz and Senator Gowan that are here today, uh, legislative 19, which is the southeast corner of, of the state. I chair the Natural Resource, Energy and Water Committee, and I'm also on the Land, Agriculture, Rural Affairs Committee. Representative Austin Smith, Legislative District 29. I serve as Vice Chairman of the House Natural Resources, Energy and Water Committee. I'm happy to be here today with you all. It's uh, Representative Leo Biasucci, Majority Leader in the Arizona House uh, from District 30, and I just wanna thank everybody I know this is a short notice, uh, 72 hours we had to put this together, but um, it's extremely important that we all get on the record um, to explain ourselves on, on what's going on um, in our backyard. So I thank you guys all for being here so quickly. Thank you. Good afternoon, Representative Tim Dunn from Legislative District 25. I'm Chair of Government. I'm also on the Natural Resource, Energy and Water Committee and on the Appropriations Committee. And a little bit of commonality with Mojave County, RLD 25 is one third of Congressman Gosar's district, so. John Gillette, LD 30, I'm Vice Chair of Government. And I also serve on Transportation, Military and Public Affairs. Thanks for being here. Clearly home field advantage, they get claps. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Corey McGar, LD17, uh, which encompasses around Tucson, Marana, Oro Valley, Pima County, and then it's just a sliver of Pinal County. <laughs> Representative Barbara Parker, Legislative District 10, covering Northeast Valley, Mesa, part of Apache Junction, Maricopa and Pinal counties. I am vice chair of health and human services and I serve on the ENRU committee as well and along with appropriations. 
We also have a couple members in the House that were excused. Uh, we got notification from Representative Stahl Hamilton and Representative Travers uh, will not be here. Um, and so they're excused for, the, for this evening's meeting. Thank you. And on the Senate side, uh, two excused senators, Senator Senderation and Senator Fernandez are excused. Thank you. Uh, opening comments. Um, um, Representative Miyasuchi, do you, as represented here, do you want to make an opening statement? And uh, Sunny, if you'd like to make an opening statement, or no, we'll, we'll, we'll go. Okay, uh, we're here uh, to sc discuss this new, uh, what many of us feel is a land grab, and take public testimony. So we have, if you want to speak at this evening's meeting, we do have sign-in sheets. If you raise your hand, we'll get you a form. Um, otherwise, we'll go ahead for the ones that have already signed up. And uh, do you want to call them, Senator? Nancy Campbell. Campbell, excuse me. Have a Sioux City Council member. Thank you. Welcome. All righty. Good evening. Nothing like being first. My name is Nancy Campbell, and I'm a Lake Havasu City Councilwoman, the Vice Chair of Rural Transportation Aviski Council, Director of Arizona at Work at, for Mojave County and La Paz. I'm the liaison in the Governance Board for the Chamber of Commerce, and I come in front of you today to request a dire need to give federally managed state lands to the state to manage. My family was born and raised in Mojave County and is one of the original pioneers of Lake Havasu City. We have a keen understanding of the importance of neighborhoods, com commonality, local municipalities, and elected officials implementing what is best for Mojave County and rural Arizona. Our land is sacred to all residents who live and thrive in Arizona. I do not believe the federal government should have any control over our water rights, our mines, or the land we need for future housing. Current data informs us the people fleeing from liberal cities are fleeing to rural Arizona. Mojave County, like many other cities, is very conservative, and we want to keep it that way. We, the people, should have the right to choose the counties which best meet our ideologies and are not overgoverned by cities or states that choose not to live in our cities. I come to you as we, the people. And we, the people, do not want the federal government interfering with our land. May our days be filled with blessings, and thank you for your service. And if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the speaker? Thank you for being here. Many of us feel the same way. Thank, thank you, you so much for all coming out today in thank such short notice. Here. Thank you. Next, we have Mojave County Chairman, Supervisor Lingenfelter. Honorable representatives, honorable senators, thank you for coming to Mojave County this afternoon to hold this very important joint special meeting. I can't thank you enough. Um, this process and this push for this monument, for those of, of you that have been around for a while, has been going on for decades. Uh, Raul Grijalva, um, has been pushing former administrations for many, many years to permanently uh, designate this, these lands as a national monument. Um, you may recall back in January of 2017 was the last push. Uh, Grijalva and, and some of the tribal organizations uh, were pushing the, at that time the Obama administration um, before Obama left office in January of 2017 to use the Antiquities Act to designate a 1.7 million acre new national monument in this very same area. After reviewing the item, the, the Obama administration declined to use the Antiquities Act to make that national monument. Um, they didn't have a chance in heck with Trump. And so now we have Biden and they're pushing for a 1.1 million acre uh, national monument, a 19th Arizona National Monument. Arizona already has 18 national monuments, by far more than any other U.S. state. This would be the 19th National Monument. 1.1 uh, million acres um, is larger than the size of the entire state of Rhode Island. 
Um, the entire Grand Canyon is 1.2 million acres. Uh, they're calling this a buffer. Uh, at 1.1 million acres, it's far more than a buffer. Um, we're already under um, a moratorium on uranium exploration in this area, which has been identified as some of the richest uh, deposits in our whole country for uranium. Um, those of you that have been watching the nuclear power industry, uh, Georgia just went online with the most modern state-of-the-art new nuclear power plant, which uh, we support. Um, but yet, uh, the moratorium is still in place till 2032, and you still hear Grijalva and, and others with these heart-jerking statements about living in a legacy of uranium contamination of water. What they're citing is back in the 1940s and the 1950s, way over on the Navajo Nation in Coconino County, um, there were some uranium mines that were not mitigated properly. The EPA had to get involved. That was in the 40s and the 50s. It is not 2023. Um, but yet they, they are, are citing water scares. Um, as a part of the moratorium that was introduced, the USGS did specific scientific study on this issue. Um, they collected over uh, 570 water samples. They published that scientific study and that data in 2021. It was done by water scientists from Flagstaff, Tucson, and Albuquerque. And they basically said that over 95% of the samples that they, that they looked at um, had nothing to do with uranium mining or contamination from mining aspects. And then the other two or three wells that were in that study had nothing to do with mining. It was natural flows that were going through naturally occurring bridge of pipes. Um, they're also claiming cultural sites. Uh, 445,000 acres of this proposed 1.1 million acres is within Mojave County. It's largely rangelands for those that have been in that area. Um, and we would take exception to the claim that 445,000 acres is all one big cultural site. Uh, we'll certainly work with you to identify and protect specific cultural sites. Mojave County has been a good partner um, with our tribes, uh, but we, we don't believe that, it, that uh, the whole thing is a big cultural site. Um, and then the last thing that I would mention is, um, you know, Mojave County has been ignored from this process. Um, in May, Interior Secretary uh, Deb Holland went to Flagstaff. She met with uh, Coconino County representatives that were elected, the tribes. Mojave County didn't even know that meeting was going to go on. They didn't invite us to participate. We weren't noticed about it. Uh, then they hold a public meeting uh, last month in Flagstaff again. Um, we barely found out about the meeting. We reached out, hey, 445,000 acres is in Mojave County. Where's our public meeting? Uh, with egg on their face. They invited us to the one in Flagstaff. Uh, we were treated very poorly. Uh, anybody that spoke from Mojave County, I know uh, Penny Pugh from Gosar's office was booed. Everybody that had opposing views were, were booed. Our ranchers were booed. Um, and then they also said, uh, we feel bad. We're going to have a virtual, at least a virtual public hearing for folks in Mojave County. Um, just this last week, uh, we received a call from a White House staffer, Matthew Lee Ashley, that said they're not going to honor their commitment and they're not going to honor their word to Mojave County citizens. They are not going to hold that virtual meeting. Tomorrow, we've been told that the Biden administration, Biden is going to be doing a four-state tour. He's going to be going to New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Arizona. Arizona's the last stop and making a major announcement. We all know what that's going to be. So again, thank you for providing this venue. Um, Process matters, and this has been a rigged process. Thank you. Yes, we have somebody who wants to ask you a question. Member Leo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Supervisor uh, Lingenfelter. I just want to first say thank you for, for taking this on. I know you've been dealing with this for quite some time. Um, you know, when we spoke, uh, last week about potentially putting some something like this together because we had this thought that they were not going to allow us to go on record, which I know you felt differently about. And, and the chairwoman uh, Griffin said, no, we need to get this on record to make sure the people of Mojave are, are able to, to express how they feel about this land grab. You, you stated you were on the phone with a meeting with the White House as well as um, I think the U.S. Senator's uh, staff was on that meeting. Can you explain a little bit about what that meeting was like? What was the conversation when you expressed 
um, your thoughts of how we feel here in Mojave, right? I mean, we have multiple counties involved, but we have a different feeling than maybe they did when you went up there to speak uh, a month ago. Can you explain a little bit, what was their reaction and did they ever at any point tell you as a sitting supervisor that they were gonna make an announcement that they, this was gonna happen tomorrow? Representative Biasucci, thank you for your question. Um, that Supervisor. the meeting in Flagstaff was, uh, I believe is on the July 18th. Um, that next week, we actually, in Mojave County, we had, uh, they gave us a, a generous 30 minute call um, with a staffer from the White House, Matthew Lee Ashley, uh, the main gentleman, uh, Chris Phelan from Office of Senator Cinema, uh, Paul Babbitt, who is the, the key gentleman for the Office of Senator Kelly, um, a couple of folks from the Department of Interior, high-level DC folks, um, and they gave us a half an hour to, to hear. You know, we laid out the water science. We laid out uh, all of the, the information that we that we found. We asked even um, from Mojave County's point of view that we didn't see the rush. You know, uh, we were already under this moratorium. Uh, we've got at least about a decade left under this moratorium to continue studying water, to continue identifying cultural sites. Um, of the 445,000 acres that's in Mojave County, clear, currently included in this, 88% of it is or, already under the management control of the BLM or the U.S. Forest Service. So we don't understand, we fail to understand why that management framework, which has worked well for decades, is no longer sufficient, especially with the fact that we have this USGS data from 2021 we haven't seen any cultural sites identified in Mojave County in this. Um, so we realize now, we thought then that maybe they were gonna listen to Mojave County's concerns. We know now that they were just doing that to cover themselves. Madam Chair. Yeah. Yes. Madam Chair. Um, Supervisor uh, Legenfelter, please, please forgive me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, my understanding is that when this new monument is designated, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is some of the lands that are in private hands right now in your county will pass uh, into the hands of the federal government, uh, which is going to cost uh, the schools in Mojave County uh, some percentage of their current revenue. Um, and if, if our Democratic colleagues were here, I would ask them how that squares with their belief that schools should be better funded. But since they're not here, I would ask you, uh, perhaps you can explain to us how much this is going to cost your schools, what the impacts on your students and staff will be. Representative Cullinan, thank you, thank you for the question. Um, let me lay out the land, the land ownership within Mojave County. So, 1.1 million acres total for the monument. 445,000 acres lies in Mojave County. Of that, 88% of it is already under the control of the BLM and the U.S. Forest Service. There's over 41,090 acres of Arizona State Trust land included in the boundaries within Mojave County, and there's over 12,000 acres of private, privately owned property that's included within that 40, 445,000 acres currently. Um, we, d we disagree with that. Um, we actually have uh, the mayor of, of Colorado City um, has driven down, he's signed up to speak. Um, we don't understand how these boundaries were drawn because if you look at the boundaries in Mojave County, um, Colorado City has seen tremendous economic resurgence and success, they're on the right track. They're bordered by canyons, they're on the other side of Zion. To, to one side, they can only grow and annex one direction. The, the current boundaries are even up against their fire district line. So it's really gonna not only further isolate them and make them an island, but it's gonna really destroy the, or, or hurt their annexation efforts. Thank you. Senator, Senator questions? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Mr. Supervisor, I just, I'm gonna read something from uh, one of the acts, federal acts here, it's actually called the, uh, the Federal Land Policy and Management Act of 1976, which kind of set the tone for uh, disposal of federal lands going forward from that point. And it says in there, Congress declares that it's the policy of the United States that one, the public lands be retained in federal ownership, unless as a result of the land use planning procedure provided for in this act, it is determined that disposal of a particular parcel will serve the national interest. So my question relating to that is, as you've, whatever discussions you were able to have with uh, the parties over the years, and since we have such a adversarial relationship with communist China and Putin's Russia, and there's a long history there with regards to uranium, has there any, 
anyone brought up any points about the national security interest in uranium that since we have such high-grade uranium here in Arizona, and since there's also a mine that's closed in the national park, with two miles from Bright Angel Trail, essentially, that people are able to walk near, so obviously it's safe to, for the public to be near. Uh, has any of that kind of a discussion regarding national security interests ever come up in the conversations? Senator Carroll, thank you. I can tell you Mojave County's position um, way back when, all the way back into, into 2010 when they were considering a moratorium. I know uh, Supervisor Johnson had, was here. Every single one of our conversations way back then, all the way up to now, that we've had with these, with these folks, um, we've brought up the national security standpoint. And with, with the global climate the way it is, with global politics the way it is, is it really the smartest thing to do from a national security standpoint and an, and an energy standpoint to forever lock off uh, the, the richest uranium mining, mining deposits in the whole country um, when, when you look at what's going on with communist China and with Russia? We don't think it makes sense. Okay, very good. And further to that. Senator, proceed. Also, in relation to past administrations, obviously, we had Trump, we had Obama, we had Bush, and uh, that other guy, what's his name, Clinton. Um, <laughs> any rate, have you noticed a slide in a direction of favoring, restricting more so now than has perhaps in the past? Senator Carroll, thank you for the question. I believe... Um, all of you are familiar, and I know at the county level we're familiar, it, um, no matter who's in office, um, you're always playing a certain level of defense. Um, with the Biden administration, I can tell you it's, it's at a level that's really unprecedented. When you look at this national monument that they're pushing, when you look at the fact that the Biden administration is, pre is pressing for over 25,000 megawatts of what they call renewable solar and wind by 2025. When you look at the administrative law that's being passed at the BLM, they're trying to push something called conservation easements, which would allow uh, uh, basically environmental groups to lease uh, public lands long-term and kick off everybody else. Um, it, the defense that we're having to try to play is unprecedented at this point. Thank you. Any other questions on the Senate? Side. Representative Gillette. Thank you, Madam Chair. Supervisor Langenfelder, what, if any, communication did you have with the tribal nations? Well, um, Supervisor. Thank you. Um, we, Mojave County has been a good partner to our tribal nations. Um, the tribal nations have never, outs I mean, there's a lot of tribal nations from the Navajo Nation all the way down by Yuma, I mean, I mean even out of the state, are, are trying to line up and support this thing, even though they're miles and miles and miles away from, from anything related to it. Um, within my district, I work very closely, or I try to, with the Walpi tribe, who has come out in support of this. Um, for the last two years, uh, Mojave County was a state party, and, and myself worked very closely with the Walpi tribe to secure their federal water law settlement, their, their, their water rights settlement. They had been trying for 14 years prior to that. Um, there's also some exploratory lithium mining going on in the Wikiup area, which they believe is a little too close for comfort to a couple of cultural sites. Mojave County is trying to work closely with them. So Mojave County, we're always, we always try to be a good partner. We'll work with everybody. Um, but, um, you know, from what we've seen, uh, we haven't been, you know, no one's tried to contact Mojave County from the tribal standpoint to really get what our views are. Madam Chair, follow up? Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Supervisor Langfelder, did the uh, executive order 14008 dated 27 January of 21 come up? Uh, no, it did not. Um, this may be something that we need to cover with the tribal nations, but on these, uh, what we're calling a land grab, it, it is a land grab, and the Biden administration has uh, authored and authorized Executive Order 14008 directing all federal lands to be subject to wind and solar programs. Uh, I'm not too sure how much the tribal nations would like a wind farm uh, in their area. But uh, this is something I have a copy of, and I, I, I plan on giving it to you. But it directs BLM, once the land is in BLM control, to study the region for wind and solar projects. And I'm, I'm not sure the tribal nations have been made aware of this in any of the negotiations. Representative Gillette, if I may, um, 
Mojave County, Mojave County finds it interesting that um, the Navajo Nation, for instance, is coming out in full support to lock up these lands, yet at the same time, they're fighting lands being locked up um, around Chaco Canyon because they think it's gonna hurt mining in that area and their jobs. Thank you, Supervisor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes, it's Senator Farrelly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Supervisor Lingenfelter, you know, there's this moratorium and it expires when? Uh, Ken Salazar, which was Obama's Secretary of the Interior, uh, they went through another, what we would call a rigged process, uh, not based on any science or data. Uh, it, it was instituted in 2012. It's a 20 year moratorium on uranium exploration. It expires in 2030, uh, 2032. Madam Chair. Yes, Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Supervisor Lingenfelder, so if there's more, this moratorium, then, then why the need, in your opinion, do you think that they, that this so desperately need to expedite this? Well, what they'll, Senator Supervisor. Burley, thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, what they'll tell you is, and if you ask Grijalva, he'll tell you that the Indian tribes um, are living with a legacy of cancer from uranium getting in their water and stuff. And again, what they're, what they're, what they're referencing is, is uh, mines on the Navajo Nation on the eastern side of Coconino County way back in the 1940s and the 1950s that maybe weren't remediated. Um, but they're trying to use that today to instill fear. Um, if you look at the real water data, there is no, there is no threat to the groundwater supplies up there. Um, and, and then they're saying that it's, all this land, all these tribes are saying this land is, is culturally significant. Um, if anybody's been up in that area, it's, it's largely rangeland. Um, and again, Mojave County and, and, and others would be happy to work with the tribes to identify specific cultural sites and help them to protect those sites. We, we take exception to them claiming that 445,000 acres of largely rangeland is one big cultural site. Madam Chair. No, no I'm not done. Yes, thank you, Ma Madam Chair. And, and, and to that point, uh, they were going, the, the environmentalists were going after the uh, Navo generating station because they said their citizens, tribal members were getting uh, sick, a lot of lung diseases and so on and so forth. But the, they, were not res they, were, they were residing 100 miles away from the Navo generating station. Then we found out that the Cayenta mine was giving raw coal to those inhabitants so they could put it in their furnaces that are technically were not even sealed properly. So th they were actually poisoning themselves, blaming it on the Navo generating station 100 miles away. So, so a lot of misinformation with the federal government, I guess is my point. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Supervisor, I wanna ask you about this uh, point on the uranium tailings, because obviously, um, very sensitive to the health of all Arizonans, including our tribal members. But from my understanding, and again, I'm from North Scottsdale, I'm not from a mining town, so correct me if, I, if I'm incorrect. Um, but it's my understanding that most of the uranium tailings, they get into the water because the water dissolves the minerals that are surrounding the uranium. Uh, and so the, water, the uranium flows into the water stream that way through dissolution. And that if that uranium were actually extracted through the process of mining, there would be fewer tailings to get into the water supply in the first place. Is that a correct assessment of how uranium mining works? Uh, Representative Cullinan, I believe that if you read the latest 2021 USGS uh, water study site, they, they confirm exactly what you just said. Thank you. And Madam Chair, just to that point and to Representative Colladin's point, I just want, um, and Supervisor, I just wanted it on the record that um, to reinforce this, that remo removing the uranium from the ground removes the source of dissolved contaminants from the water, making the Colorado River and groundwater safer for current and future generations. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Right, seeing none, thank you, Supervisor. You. Next, we have mayor, the mayor of Colorado City, Howard Ream. Welcome for the record, would you, Welcome for the record. Would you introduce yourself, please? 
My name is Howard Ream. I am the mayor of Colorado City, Arizona. And, uh, honorable senators and representatives. The state managed land that's being proposed as a Grand Canyon monument has very negative impacts as to our fire district boundaries and economic impacts, just as the community of Colorado City has begun to recover from a social and economic, economic downfall. It also affects our, our community's ability to grow in a healthy way through annexation. It affects our cattle industries and other businesses that really support our area. We feel this monument will further separate us from our counterparts in the state. I know that uh, Supervisor Lingenfelter had touched on all these points, but I'd like to just go on the record saying that. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any questions for the mayor? Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have Penny Pugh, District Director for Congressman Paul Gosar. Thank you, Madam Chair and honorable members of the Senate and the House Joint. Uh, my name is Penny Pugh. I'm Congressman Gosar's District Director in Intergovernment, un, Intergovernmental Affairs. And yes, um, I think there's eight of you here who are from um, Congressman Gosar's Congressional District, and I appreciate you taking the time. And yes, I was booed. However, that's a badge of honor. The leftists booed me, and that's okay. Congressman Gosar asked me to come. He's not able to be here today. He is in a neighboring community. And he appreciates the opportunity for um, he, me to read this brief statement. Congressman Gosar opposes BLM's proposal to delegate existing public lands as a national monument in Northern Arizona. The move represents the Biden administration's la latest massive land grab and would have devastating effects on Mojave County. This proposal circumvents congressional authority, threatening the American public's access and use of federal lands. Furthermore, the proposal was never coordinated with Mojave County, whose community will be permanently changed by this designation. 50% of Arizona is designated federal land. Arizona cannot afford to be, have more land taken away. Designating another 1.1 million acres as a national monument will further reduce private ownership and hardworking rural Americans in Mojave County will be harmed. The actions taken by the BLM illustrates the Biden administration's lack of interest in stakeholders on the ground as they advance and promote a radical environmental justice agenda above all else. BLM's attempt to unlawfully circumvent Congress and restrict the American public's access and use of federal lands is a clear example of the Biden administration's abuse of executive authority. Whether it is the ever-expanding war on domestic energy production hostility to domestic mining, prohibition of gas stoves, draconian mandates on what cars Americans can drive, or restricting the public's access and use of federal lands, the Biden administration will stop at nothing to inject Joe Biden's radical eco-agenda in every aspect of American life. Congressman Gosar will fight any mo new monuments and will seek to defund using the power of the purse Another way would be to introduce a resolution of disapproval to rescind the rule that was created to allow these new monuments. He will be also working with other members such as Representative Biggs and Representative Crane. And it is um, outrageous what this administration regime is trying to do. So on behalf of Congressman Paul Gosar, thank you and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. If there's any questions, I'm happy to try and handle them. Yes, questions? First. Senator Borelli. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair and, and Ms. Few. So normally the process, when, when the Bureau of Land Management is in there, because they're supposed to, they have started to, to uh, basically manage water rights and, and uh, grazing, but then it's morphed into more, more responsibilities and encroachment. Now, when normally when this something like this happens on the BLM side, there has to be a NEPA study, which is an environmental study, before anything can be put in the resource management plan for the region. By the federal government doing it this way, they're completely going an end run around the BLM, and, uh, but technically they're gonna try to make the BLM actually 
enforce this or, or management manage this process? Madam Chair, Senator Borelli, um, yes, in a short answer. There's generally an, an environmental assessment or at least an impact environmental study that is done on swaths of land that are going to be put in there. The actual average time for an environmental study is about seven and a half years in Arizona. Um, that's definitely not being done right now. So yes, they are bypassing. And interesting enough that BLM and the Forest Service appear to be going to joint manage this, which is going to be problematic and going forward. So, Senator. Yes, Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, this is, okay, I may, maybe I'm just gonna be making a statement or a question, maybe you can conf confirm or deny, but this is just a massive bureaucratic land grab outside of even the Enabling Act on statehood to in, in have other bureaucratic agencies, unelected bureaucrats, completely control the land in Arizona. Madam Chair, Senator Borelli, I think control is the key word here. This is an operative um, move to control all the land, the mining, the grazing, um, et cetera. The economic viability of those lands, uh, Colorado City with Mayor Reams here um, would be impact, certainly. Um, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to fathom what's happening right now, but this is uh, do or die for them. They know that this, this regime may not last. So they're trying to do it as quick as possible, if I can be bold. Madam Chair. Thank you. Representative. Representative call, call it in. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I know that, uh, that the Congressman serves on, on the Federal House's uh, version of the Natural Resources Committee. Um, and as a member of his staff, I figured you might know the answer to this, this question. If, if we don't get the uranium from Arizona, for the nuclear reactors that we need to provide this country with green energy. Where will that uranium most likely come from, if not from here? Madam Chair, Penny, Representative Col uh, Culloden, Congressman held a critical minerals round table, uh, not a round table, a joint hearing um, official as they do in Washington DC in Goodyear, Arizona about two weeks ago. And it was pointed out by Congressman Gosar that China would probably be the one. And since they're such friendly with us and would be so happy to give us things, um, I can't imagine that we would want to rely on either them or Russia for any critical, critical minerals that would be necessary to our uh, national security and safety. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes, Senator Carroll. And Ms. Penny, if I may posit something here for your, if you feel free to respond to it or, or hold it back just in case. But um, given the climate down in Washington right now with uh, some of the discoveries about the transference of monies and the relationship to business in foreign countries. Uh, and since we, I attended the Goodyear hearing that we had two weeks ago and, and it was fantastic and um, uh, you want to speculate on any prospects here that there might be a connection with regards to this uh, land grab that's going on? Well, Penny. Madam Chair, Senator Carroll, since I'm here on behalf of Congressman Gosar, I can tell you that there's definitely red flags. Um, I'm not going to go any further. I think that uh, there's corruption and it goes very deep. And I think I'll leave it at that at this Good. point. Madam Chair, that's perfect. Red flags, communist China. It sounds good. Thank you. Rep Representative Smith. Madam, Madam Chair, Penny, thank you for being here. Um, do you, did the White House reach out to Congressman Gosar at all about this project? Uh, Madam Chair, Representative Smith, strange that you would ask. Uh, Chair Griffin asked if I could get some maps. And so on behalf of Congressman Gosar, I contacted the Bureau of Land Management, sent some emails. They didn't respond, so I went to their office today in Kingman and asked for them. They told me they didn't have them. 
So I called the Phoenix office and the Phoenix office said, oh, you mean the one that's just declared? And I said, well, sir, I don't believe it's declared yet. So she called me back, the lady called me back and said, I'm sorry, he'll have to call the White House if he wants some maps. So um, no, they didn't reach out to us, nor did we expect them to. Um, so in answer to your question, we're not real tight with this White House. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Penny. <laughs> uh, Representative Gillette. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is more of a, a to that point to Senator Borelli's uh, comments and, and Ms. Pugh's comments. But looking up the order and the land grab information, um, tried to figure out the speed, the speed in which they're moving. And I found a statement on methodology, and I would like to read that if I may, Madam Chair. This is right off the whitehouse.gov website under the executive order on how they put the order together. Uh, and if you'll bear with me a minute, my glasses are in the truck, but I'll squeeze through it here. <laughs> Methodology. In carrying out its activities, the White House Working Group shall consider recommendations of the National Academy of Science and Engineering, Medicine, as reported in value climate damages, whatever that means. Updating estimates on social cost of carbon dioxide and other pertinent scientific literature, solicit public comment, engage with the public and stakeholders, seek advice from ethics experts, ensure that the CSS, C, or SCN and SCM reflect the interests of future generations. So I looked this up and under section 214, it says this is an act to protect the land for future generations but yet they're going to put solar on it. So I think you hit the nail on the head with the speed. This administration is not gonna last long and they wanna get this solar project started um, in direct conflict with the law that Sonny, or Senator Borelli had mentioned. And I, I think this methodology is the speed. It's just a, an attempt to push the green social agenda. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Representative Biasucci. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Penny, for being here, uh, representing Congressman Gosar. I'm not sure if you have the answer to this, or maybe Chairwoman Griffin does, but assuming, I think we all know this is probably going to happen tomorrow with this designation from this administration. If a new administration comes into play in 24, let's all pray to God that that happens um, for all of our, um, you know, to save this country. Can we reverse this designation? Or can they, can the new administration reverse the designation that is likely gonna to happen tomorrow. Madam Chair, Representative Biasucci, yes. Um, this is an executive order, hasn't gone through Congress. Generally on a designation, you have a congressional member in that district, which currently is Congressman Gosar, who would introduce legislation and go that route. Now we have a Southern Arizona representative, using that term loosely, same guy that boycotted Arizona, trying to side with the tribes and uh, this Biden regime to make this happen. Again, full control um, of all of us and have a, all of us be subservient to what is happening in this regime. And a quick follow-up, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, and Penny, do, and I know Representative Austin asked this um, regarding the potentially the designation, but was Congressman Gosar at all contacted by any of the other congressmen or senators or the Biden administration letting him know that this is going to happen? Did they notify him to say, look, we've made the decision? Did they get his input in any way, shape or form on this um, during this process? Madam Chair, Representative Biasucci, I think um, as a member of the Natural Resource Committee, um, I think the Congressman knew this was un under web, that we've been fighting this, we've done statements um, well. National monuments designating um, random land has been happening since he was elected. And he's in his seventh term. We've done numerous roundtables, press releases. So did they reach out directly from the White House? No. Did Congressman Gosar know this was happening? I think everyone in Natural Resource Committee knew this was going to happen. Um, that is something that they're going to take control of. And this is the way that they're doing it, through the executive order. They can't get it through the House, so they want to try it any other way. Thank you. Ms. Pugh, uh, those of us that 
uh, have been in my office have seen my red and white maps that we've put together and I don't know whether you're familiar with the war on the west and 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 how much land we have in Arizona and, and members in your in your packet you have copies of this and you have a copy of the uh, the state map and what you see in white is all we have in private hands what you see in red is federally controlled or tribal lands uh, and and so we have we have 13 percent or less than 13 percent of land in private hands uh, 19 98, the Arizona uh, Farm Bureau did a study and came up with that figure. And as you know, uh, we have lost additional private property since 1998. So we really don't know how much private property we do have. Uh, this is our tax base for the people sitting out there in, in your audience. Uh, this is your tax base. So when we lose our tax base, uh, in order to support uh, the county and the city uh, services taxes have to be raised and so uh, as we continue to see overlays uh, and land grabs from, from the federal government and um, even conservation easements that lower the value of property and lower the taxes uh, this is something uh, of magnitude that we really need to pay attention to and uh, the the maps we, we were able to get some maps not large ones, but in members in your package, you, you have the maps in your in your package. And this is uh, absolutely unreal. We do appreciate um, Congressman Gosar and his continued fight for what's right. Uh, and this is not right. Uh, the, not only should they uh, be required, and they are required to coordinate with the state government and the local governments when they make decisions like this, and this is not happening. And so uh, thank you for being here. Yes, Madam Chair, if I may add, um, when you talk about the state land, remember that the funds from those cells goes directly to our schools. Yeah. And when we don't have that, it cuts into the PILT fun funding and um, the schools. So I appreciate the opportunity and I appreciate you coming here and, and being in Mojave County to listen to the constituents yes. here. Madam Chair, to that point. To that point. Uh, I, I was wondering if you could if you could spin out the funding impact on the schools. That's something I've been trying to get to the bottom of, and I know this is a relatively new proposal, so I'm really trying to get my my hands around whether there's going to be any education impact here. Madam Chair, uh, Representative Culloden, I can only guess on that because I've not done the homework on that. I have not seen the official map that will outline that. I would suspect that it's going to impact but I can't give you a, a definitive how much. Madam Chair, a follow, quick follow-up to that. Yes. Why do you suspect it's gonna impact? What is it about the structure of this thing that, that makes you think that it will have those impacts? Madam Chair, Representative Culloden, I think um, if you look at the direction that empowerment scholarships are taking, they're not, a, they're not popular with one side of the aisle. I would say that um, public schools probably won't be impacted, but I think that we need to be mindful that there could be changes in those uh, empowerment funding. And, and to that point, and to that point, uh, Representative Colladin, when you have an overlay on state trust lands, it it does affect the future value and use of those lands, and that will definitely adversely affect. The funding for state schools. Ah, thank you, Chairwoman. Yes. And Madam Chair, to that point, uh, if we, and I know staff will obviously have their hands full in the next uh, day or two, but uh, each of those, you know, all those acres of trust land have beneficiaries uh, within our state constitution, obviously, so that those funds are to be directed to. So if we get a if we go ahead and get a copy of uh, all those uh, beneficiaries to those uh, state trust lands, that would be, I think, helpful in uh, monetizing uh, that dollar amount going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Gowan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Penny, good to Sir. see you. Uh, thank you for what you do, and the Congressman, known him a very long time, does a very good job, especially with our rural regions. And uh, this is a bit outrageous, I think, as, as uh, Representative 
uh, Griffin showed the map. I mean, how much more land do you think they need? The rest of the white? Maybe they should take the rest of the white. But at any rate, um, you know, we had an enabling act that occurred 1910. And it says the Arizona New Mexico Enabling Act 1910 passed on June 20th, 1910, authorized the territory of Arizona to become a state and enter the union on equal footing with the original states. I don't think so. So equal footing would be that we would receive our lands. The federal government held out and kept more than 40% of those lands in perpetuity, which we're seeing now. Uh, I think there's a lawsuit maybe happening out there. I know Utah's looking at that. I'm hoping that we're, we're going to attach to ourselves to that and uh, get these lands back. I know in the last part of the 1800s, there were middle states, the Midwest, as they were the Western states then, they were not brought on an equal footing either. And they sued and the Supreme Court sided with them and they got their federal lands. And if you look up here, you go, you go east of the Rockies, less than 2% of lands total belong to the federal government. Now you look west of there and they, they own almost the whole west and then they think we're their playground. So I'm wondering if a uh, congressman might want to send something in, in certain nature, friendly nature, I guess, and say uh, maybe, uh, maybe they should declare some of those eastern areas mm -hmm. national monuments and parks. I wonder why they don't do that. A lot of population, maybe. Penny, Rep or Chairman Griffin and Senator Gowan, yes. There's um, less population in the West and they think that we don't have fight. But if you remember when Arizona became a state, we did have to take, that was one of the agreements that we took some of that federal land. And I think it's long past the time that we fight back and get some of that federal land back and certainly don't bend over and, and let them take more. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Penny, uh, just to follow up, because I have this pesky thing here you call the Constitution. And I read here, to exercise exclusive legislation, this is uh, just so we all know, Article 1, Section 8, and it's Part 15 in there. To exercise exclusive legislation in all cases, we're talking about Congress, whatsoever of such district, not exceeding 10 miles square as may, by session of particular states, and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States. Now we know that's the District of Columbia, but then it has comma, and to exercise like authority over all places purchased, I think I said that right, purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of, and here it is, of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings. So what needful buildings or arsenals or anything you think they're going to use here? Ms. Madam Hume. Chair, Senator Gowan, they're not following the Constitution. I think we can, we can put that at the top of the list. As Congressman uh, Gosar does any legislation or considers voting on any legislation, that's the first thing he looks at is, is it constitutional? If it's not, then it's a pretty solid no. Sometimes it's not popular, but that's just... If we have a constitution and we don't use it, what are we? We are, we are not set aside um, any different country if we don't use our rule of law and the constitution. Thank you, Madam Chair. Penny. Senator Gowan. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes. Madam Chair. Penny, um, since you were probably attached to GOSAR in DC and the discussions that took place on all of this and have been on, on the same page with all of this, I come from Representative um, Congressman Biggs's area. Um, a little more concerning was the threat to national security. Does that come up when um, our access to uranium supplies are gone and China is becoming the largest producer of nuclear power in the world? Did they have a discussion about that? Yes, Chairwoman Griffin, uh, Ms. Parker, yes, that conversation was had. Um, I think it's important to remember that national security and also private property rights. Americans have private property rights. If you have a property that is yours, that's yours. 
Okay, I think that sets us again aside from other countries. If I go to Mexico, I can't buy land there, but I can buy land in America. So yes, that's been considered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Senator Gallen. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I just have to keep going back to how great the federal government does out in the West here. You know, it, who would be stewards over this? when the taking happens? Ms. Pugh. Uh, chair, woman, Senator the Gowan. Interior. So it would appear that they should be the ones um, because that's land, but that's, they're going to delegate that. And it looks like they may delegate that to the Bureau of Land Management and the Forest Service. We don't know yet, but we do know that the best stewards are the ones that hold that and the ranchers and the hunters and the grazers and the environmentalists who are out taking care of the land. They are the best stewards. And Madam Chair. Senator. Thank you, Penny. Um, <laughs> so all those departments you name, where are they headquartered? Well, uh, Madam Chair, Senator Gowan, I believe they're in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Which is a great place I think that's right. probably true, and that's a little further away than right here. And I, I think uh, the federal government has shown um, their inability to manage our areas quite well, especially with the fires that we've seen. They don't manage these forests whatsoever. They, they fall upon us. We actually had to do legislation last year and a year before to allow the state to go in and clean up some of those areas. And we actually had to ask them for that permission because they don't do that. So I can only imagine what they're gonna allow happen in this region if a fire hits in, in any manner. I, I just don't see them uh, taking care of this land, even in that effect. And it's just, they don't know us out here and they ought to stay away and allow us to run our own lands. So thank you, Penny, and thank the Congressman for me. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Gowan, when fires break out in managed areas such as monuments and wilderness areas, it makes it very difficult to fight the fire. It used to be that ranchers would put those out because they would be on their land and they would protect it. Now you get jailed for doing such things. Senator Borelli. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair and, and Ms. Penny. Um, we get that they call PILT. It's a payment in lieu of taxes, which we all refer to as pennies in lieu of taxes. Oh, so um, how much of that really is the, is the deficit that they still owe the states for that? If you just, by any chance. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator Burley, I believe the last, I think they were paying 30 or 40 cents on the dollar to the municipalities that qualify for that. And to that point, uh, every year we have to beg for it. They have to beg for it because it doesn't come voluntarily. And I'm and sure that's correct. It's unfortunate yeah. that um, we're like the stepchildren of the East Coast. I mean, that's just in modern language, that's what it is because not that all stepchildren are, taught, are treated like that, but uh, the West, um, they, they seem to think that that's just play money and they take that to use for other projects. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Pugh. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. <laughs> next, we, next we have Supervisor Hilde Angias, and she will also be speaking on behalf of Jean, Supervisor Jean Bishop. Thank you, Madam Chair and Committee. Thank you so much for coming all this way. I know we all know how far it is, and we really appreciate it. And to Chairman Lingenfelter for putting this together in the last minute. He's been such a great advocate, being so proactive so quickly in getting you all here. So thank you very much. Uh, first, I'm going to read a statement from Supervisor Bishop, who sends her apologies. She cannot, could not be here tonight. So this is her statement. I would like to express my strong opposition to the creation of a new 19th National Monument in Arizona. Almost half of the land, 445,000 acres, encompassed by this 1.2 million acre proposal lies in Mojave County as we fight to have our voices heard. This will further reduce private property ownership 
and harm hardworking rural Americans in our county. In 2012, President Obama placed a 20-year uranium mining moratorium on Mojave and Coconino County lands that would now be encompassed by the new mo national monument. So making that moratorium permanent under this proposal can only harm or further isolate our rural communities in Mojave County. It seems to me that it would be more valuable to use the time left on the moratorium to conduct further studies on identifying human needs and environmental resource impacts so we can provide scientific data in making future informed decisions. The Flagstaff meeting represented not only a division of interests, but a division between Coconino County residents and Mojave County residents. I question the need to rush this monument designation in Mojave County. There's no irreversible harm because of the moratorium currently in place. In summary, I support this monument in our sister county of Coconino, but leave Mojave County out of the equation. The 445,000 acres within Mojave County should be removed and the federal government should continue to work with Mojave County and all other stakeholders under the current management framework. And that's from Supervisor Jean Bishop Thank from you. District 4. Um, I'd like to say that as I am outraged, but not surprised at this brazen land grab. I've been a supervisor now for going on 12 years, and ever since I started, we saw the encroachment of the federal government into our lives, into our way of life. We've been fighting the unelected bureaucratic um, organizations in Washington. And the difference now is, is that they don't even care about our input. They used to at least pretend like they wanted to follow the rules. But at the end, if they know what they want, they're going to get it no matter what. So we have to make a decision what we're going to do, because it's not going to stop here. You got the monument. You've got the um, acres that they're taking for solar plants. We just had a discussion today about the solar plants, the solar farms coming here. And, you know, Mojave County wants to do a moratorium. I mean, what, what kind of county are we going to be? You know, you wake up one morning and you say, how did we get here? And my answer is always the same, little by little by little. Incrementalism. They're patient. And they know if they do it like that, we'll do nothing. Because frankly, we've spoken a lot, but we really haven't done the kind of fighting that the other side does. And I know you all understand that. So I'm asking this committee, and I'm asking Congressman Gosar, that we must make a stand now, before it's too late, before we wake up and we all have to leave. There'll be no taxes for schools. You know, uh, years ago, uh, when I first started, uh, there was a big movement in the um, American Lands Council, and it was the transfer of public lands, as Senator Gowan was talking about. We fought all those fights, and we, we really couldn't get anywhere. I know they're back in action, but we learned a lot about the Enabling Acts, and quite honestly, the uh, constitutional issues with everything they do. And I think if the West bands together, the states band together, I know Utah is doing some tremendous things. And we all need to get together and fight the one fight. And that is to keep Washington out of our lives. Because we are not them. You know, one more thing. Years ago, I was um, fighting. They came in and they wanted to stop a 50-year-old trout stocking program on the Colorado River. Without asking us, without doing an uh, economic impact study, we are a tourist county. It was outrageous. So I go there and talk to them. And, you know, I go and I, in front of the Department of Interior people. And, and I said to them, you know, how would you like to wake up one morning and look outside and all the national monuments are closed? And then when you like get off up the floor, you say, who made this decision? And they say, people back out west who've never lived here. That's what they're doing to us. They're making decisions on things they know nothing about. Frankly, 
The Ivy League schooled environmentalists are making our policies when we know the people closest to the land are the best stewards. So you ask who's going to be a steward of this? The people back, the people back east who don't give a damn. So I behoove all of us to get together, make a plan, do a strategy, and keep speaking loudly and frankly to do whatever we have to do. So thank you very much for being here again. Thank you, Supervisor. <laughs> Up next, we have Thomas Bond, and he's with the Golden Valley Improvement Economic and Tourism Committee. Welcome, Mr. Bond, and for the record, please state your name. Thank you, Supervisors, and thank you for inviting me down today. My name is Thomas R. Bond. Uh, I am the coordinator for the Golden Valley Improvement Economic and Tourism Coalition. We're new. We're going to be filing very soon for our political action committee with Alan. Uh, with uh, Mojave County, and this is to make Golden Valley better, to develop it, and to bring in good economy and make it great. <laughs> I am here in shock. I was really, I was here all day today. I was not going to come um, because I did not know the impact of this, and I received a call from a good friend of mine who was very high in the former Trump administration. I'm going to tell you something that has not gone on the news wires. Right now, the Biden administration has its finger on 1.5 million acres in Colorado that they are going to make a national monument tomorrow, which is going to stop 1 18th of all oil production in the United States. This just came down the line. I can't say who I spoke with a very high official that used to be with the Donald J. Trump administration. I'm letting you know, they are on a parade right now. There's going to be five other states. This is not out in the public yet. It will be, you will find out, but I'm giving you a heads up. I believe this is going to impact Arizona because we're going through the same exact thing now, and that's what we're fighting for tonight. I'm not going to take up a lot of time. I know you're busy. You have very important things to do. And the reason I'm here is I am a resident and a new resident of Golden Valley. I am a conservative, a Reagan conservative from California. I moved out here with my family. My brother passed away from prostate cancer on the move out here. We have sacrificed a lot. My business is in Golden Valley biograph company productions i am also in media the good part of media and i am here to help i'm in arizona now and i'm here to help defend our land and our businesses here and to make the area great we refuse that a socialist president can come in illegally and try and take our land here ain't gonna happen while i'm over in golden valley and that's that. I'm new here, and I thank you for welcoming me. You can contact me on Facebook. We have our coalition going, and we're going to stop this. And it's not just Arizona. It is a multi-state takeover. So please look into it, vet this, and we're behind you guys. Thank you for your valuable and precious time. And in Golden Valley, we are 110% behind you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Next, we have Mr. Jack Earhart. Welcome, Mr. Earhart. For the record, please state your name. Jack Earhart, live here in Kingman on Adams Street. And I'm a general building contractor, three licenses, and four generations of my family live here. So I've been part of the coalition to bring this about, and I thought you probably should see a face of who's been involved with it. I was with Raul Grijalva in O'Halloran 
uh, at our first meeting at the Grand Canyon with the tribes to talk about, you know, taking this area and putting it in a preservation state. The, it, it seems like some of the questions you guys are asking, you should really know the answer to. You've got the resources, and you really, as elected paid officials, need to know the answers. Asking other people the questions isn't the way to really run our government. And I know, you know, as the environmentalist here in the community, um, I still work across, you know, and, and work with everybody. Um, Paul Gosar just texted, or the person standing next to me, next to him just texted me asking a question, because we work together. That this issue of a land takeover is being blown out of perspective. The tribes originally owned this land and really taken the time to give some consideration to the fact that it was their land originally. And this is a coalition of tribes that came together to ask for this. It's not like some big land takeover. It's not a conspiracy theory. And it just needs to be put in perspective. The, the seven primary tribes simply want to be able to have a place that they consider sacred, protected. That's all. It's, it's just not what it's being blown up to be. Um, you know, I work with Travis Lingenfelder. He and I have been on committees together. I was the planning and economic development director for the Walpi tribe for 13 years. So I know the federal process, and it's not as easeful as it's being made out to be. I work both back and forth. So I would just, as a proponent of it, and been on the low-level part of the committee, just ask that you stop back and reflect that um, it's not as federal government evil as it's supposed to be or is being put out to be. So thanks for your time. Don't shoot me. Yep. Representative. Uh, Mr. Earhart, I, I've got some questions for you if you'd be so kind. Sure. Uh, first of all, I, I do want to apologize for, for all of us not knowing the answer. Unfortunately, we were not consulted either. Otherwise, we would have spun up our research staff. But sometimes the fastest way to get information is talking to members of the public who already know. Um, you mentioned that the tribes originally owned this land. It was, it was my understanding of, of tribal law, which is limited, that, that there was no concept of ownership with most of the Native American communities of the Southwest, that they originally were occupying the land, using the land, but did not own it. Is that correct or incorrect? You know, that's semantics. They considered it their land. They fought to keep their land. They would fight between the boundaries. There's actually, you know, because they considered it their land. So, so yeah, it was their land. Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Earhart. It's the same way as you own your land right now that you live at your house. Um, Madam Chair, Mr. Earhart. I'm not sure it is a question of semantics, though, because it's my understanding that in this non-ownership society, the land was really held as a commonwealth, as a common trust, not by a government, but for the benefit of the tribal people. Um, from everything I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, the people of the tribes, they, they benefit uh, from having access to these mining jobs, to having access to this industry. Is that incorrect in your estimation? I sat with the chairman of the local Wallapai tribe while mining companies would come and want to discuss mining on the Wallapai land. They have 1.1 million acres. And the chairman said something I'll never forget. He said, if you can tell me absolutely, without question, where this uranium is going to be used, then I'll bring it to our tribal council. And of course, the mining companies got up and left because you can't. So really, this is just, this whole thing is just basically about letting the tribes have something back that they deserve. M Madam Chair, Ms. Mr. Earhart, I, I wonder though, you said you sat with the chairman of the tribal council and he gave this very high-minded statement. Have, have, have you sat with, with tribal members, maybe people who, who might be out of a job, and have you asked them whether they're willing to dispense with, with a community of well-paying mines right 
in their backyard? Have you a asked them that question? If so, what did they say? No. Mr. Earhart. It's just a general consensus of the tribal council and the chairman at the oh. time. So. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Madam Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Senator and um, sir, thank you so much. I, we appreciate the respectful opposition to we have these hearings and these discussions for a reason because we absolutely want to hear both sides of the issue. So it is good to have you here and to have your perspective without a doubt. Um, uh, as a, a freshman lawmaker, um, I wish I had the answers to everything all the time. Um, and uh, it pains me that I don't all the time, and we try to stay up on everything. I just want you to know there's, it's a big state with a lot of issues, so, so we try. But um, sometimes we ask questions also to make sure that they're entered into the record or that the testimony is put into the record as well. So there are other reasons for questions. But I have a question for you. You said you met with the tribes. Has the tribal council agreed to maybe a smaller portion being designated instead of the... Yeah, and listening to everything's going on, um, you know, Supervisor Lingenfelter knows me. He could have called me. He knows my position on, you know, tribal nations' rights. And this has been going on for, you know, over a decade. We probably met out there five years ago to start this based on, you know, the, the tribe's concerns. So it's, it's not been a secret. I mean, anybody could have gotten involved at any point. Um, and all somebody has to do locally is give me a call and I'll give anybody an update. Yes. There hasn't really been a shut off. Madam Chair? To, just a second to that point. I have a to that point. And I yield to you, Senator. Thank you, thank you, thank you Madam Chair. And thank you, Representative Parker. Uh, to that point, I think that's the purpose of this whole meeting today is communication. Yeah. The federal government was not communicating with Mojave County. They communicated with Cochise County, Coconino County, but not Mojave County. That's, uh, that's the point of this whole exercise today. And when we talk about bipartisanship, Madam, Madam Chair, we talk about bipartisanship. We all knew about this, got heads up about this meeting Friday, correct? Same time. And, you know, I, it, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have no more questions for you. But Madam Chair, I want to like, I want to thank my colleagues for being here today. Um, Madam Chair. We, we, all, we all have, I'm sorry, indulge me, Representative Parker. Thank you. We all had the same opportunity of a heads up, when to come here, get informed on this. Our Democrat colleagues on the other side, the minority, they refused to show up because they said they didn't have enough time to come here to Kingman. I showed up. No, I'm talking about the legislatures. So when we talk about there needs to be bipartisanship, we need to have communication, we need to put down uh, political biases and barriers, well, guess what? They say that they talk the talk, but they won't walk the walk. And I want to thank my colleagues for being here and taking the time to come here, because it's a three-hour drive from Phoenix. Senator Gowan had to come all the way from Sierra Vista. That's a six-hour drive. Thank you very much. God bless you. And I thank you also. Um, Parker, yes, continue, yes, please. Yes, Madam Chair. Mr. Earhart? Yes. Yes. Just one thing again. Um, I'm not sure I, I received an answer, but I think one of the biggest concerns was the sheer volume of the land um, as opposed to 1.1 million acres. I wanted to get on the record to having spoke with our mining industry, um, the impact of the uranium mining only affects 15 acres of actual mining impact. So was there an agreement that maybe for the sacredness of um, the tribal lands, was there an agreement that maybe a smaller portion could have been designated? I firmly believe that there could have been, you Thank know, you. when, when the, in you. the beginning of this and when people heard about it and we come together, I firmly believe that there could have been a compromise. Thank you, and Madam Chair, just to follow up, Mr. Earhart, I just have to say, I'm an Arizona native, born and raised, <clears throat> so this is my land, and I love it. And uh, uh, we realize the interconnectivity that we have with the tribes, and when something does hurt the massive amount of industries that this hurts, it will have that impact on the tribes as well. If I could just say one thing briefly. Please. The Havasupai tribe that lives 
off the rim of the Grand Canyon, and there's a small river that runs right through the middle of their tribe. One of the biggest concerns that the tribes had for their sister tribe is that the aquifer that feeds t to that village, if there was any contamination in the smallest amount from any uranium mining, any type of small accident, there's a good chance it could pollute you know, the life-giving water to this small tribe. And it has been one of the biggest concerns because there has been violations by some of the mining, the one that was mentioned that's close to um, the South Rim Park. So if you can imagine a commu whole community, you know, looking up and knowing uranium mining's going on and being terrified, that's been part of the impetus of trying to uh, do this protection. Madam Chair, Mr. Erhan, um, if I may follow up to that point. Um, I know Havasupai and I know that area really well. Backpacked it, hiked it, gone down on horses, um, you know, donkeys, done it all. And I can tell you it is a, a national treasure as well as an Arizona treasure. And I don't think there's any of my colleagues that wouldn't agree that that is one of Arizona's highlights is um, the Havasupai and the Havasupai Indians and the wonderful, wonderful area that is. And again, I hope going forward that there is an opportunity to have that dialogue regarding their specific concerns because my heart goes out to them if that is a concern. Thank you. Madam Chair. It is. Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Earhart. Uh, if, if I may, Senator just a, a point for clarification, so I understand, because you said a couple of things here, and I just want to see which way this is going. You said that the uh, the head of the tribe, uh, what, what do they call him? The, the, the chairman. The chairman, okay. The chairman's question was to the mining interest, what was going to become of the uranium? Correct. And that was his concern, or was it the contamination of the water? With the Wallapai, it was, was there some documentation that could be verified that the uranium that would be mined on the tribal land, they would know exactly where it was going, what it was going to be used for, and they couldn't answer that. And just further to that point, what was the interest on the part of the chairman as far as what he would accept, where it would go, what would that be? Probably, did, I, I can't speak for the chairman, but off the top of my head, I would think nuclear weapons or something of, you know, mass destruction probably was on his mind. Okay, for something for defense of the country then was his concern. Okay. Well, Thank hopefully you. we're not going to be using nuclear weapons. Okay. Madam Chair, to, Madam Chair, Mr. Earhart, to that point, there are dozens of uses for uranium. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And, and the technology is getting really advanced. Thank, okay. thank you very thank much. Thank you, Mr. Earhart. Representative Griffin. Vice Chair, I'd like to read into the record uh, Supervisor Buster Johnson's comments. He's not able to, he wasn't able to stay. He represents District 3 in Mojave County. The constituents that I represent greatly suffer uh, if this monument were to go for, forward. As an elected official, I am very concerned that this monument was proposed without any coordination with Mojave County officials whose area will be drastically changed by this designation. As you may be aware, Arizona currently has 18 national monuments. We have more monuments than any other state in the country. Arizona is over 50% federal land and Mojave County is over 90%, designating more land as off limits to economic growth will be devastating to our county. If this proposed monument is to put into place, it will permanently ban over 1 million acres of uranium rich land in Northern Arizona. The uranium industry in the Southwest has historically been major economic driver for the region. Mojave County and our neighboring state of Utah could see major economic potentials with environmentally sound uranium mining well outside the National Park on the Arizona Strip. According to the USGS, this area contains the nation's highest grade uranium endowment and one third of the nation's known uranium, uh, enough uranium to provide power generation for the state of California for over 20 years if no other source of electricity were used according to the Nuclear Energy Institute. In 2012, President Obama, Interior Secretary Ken Salazar, 
withdrew mineral entry over 1 million acres of these uranium rich lands on the Arizona Strip area. This ban included both BLM and National Forest Service lands. According to the 2009 Tetra Tech study, uranium mining would generate nearly $29 billion to the economies of Northern Arizona and Southern Utah. The withdrawal took away much needed growth and jobs from our area removed economic growth opportunities for Native Americans and other local taxpayers. Energy Fuels employ, employs over 200 people at the Banning Utah Mill, Arizona's America's only remaining uranium mill. One of those employees are Native American. Half, one half of those employees, sorry, are Native Americans. Everyone loses with this ill-conceived proposal. I respect and take seriously our responsibility for protecting the Grand Canyon. In 2012, the Secretary of the Interior, Ken Salazar, reasoning behind the withdrawal was out of concern that it could damage the region's drinking water and park water quality. In fact, Salazar's own National Park Service officials contradicted those claims by saying the capture of uh, in emails, they had no evidence of contamination of water and had no evidence of problems with the safe operation of the uranium mines in operation on these lands. In recent USGS water studies shows that mining pipes outside the national park is no way threatens Colorado River or its tributaries above what is naturally occurring. Modern uh, pipe uranium mines is one of the most environmentally sound methods of mining. On average, mining can be completed in five to seven years and the lands reclaimed to a pristine state. Despite the abundant domestic uranium in supplies as of April 2023, American nuclear utilities are continuing to import nearly 60% of the uranium used to produce electricity for United States citizens from Russia. Pakistan uh, and China. The balance comes from friendly sources in Canada, Australia, and South Africa. This means that American utilities are bankrolling Russians' war against Ukraine. As recently as 1990s, nearly all uranium came from domestic or friendly sources. The withdrawal of uranium mining from the Northern Strip area harms the American people by removing between 326 to 375 million pounds uh, equivalent electricity ca capability for the entire state of California is nearly 40 million people for 22.4 years of uranium. Arizona must return to its mining roots. The strict federal and state environmental laws already on the books will protect the public from environmental damage to the Grand Canyon watershed. Again, this is not open pit mining. In conclusion, this new proposed monument will have devastating impacts on local communities and their economies in Mojave County. When considering the proposal, I also ask that BLM that they go through the congressional approval process. It is important to remember the Antiquities Act and its intended purpose. The act was de designed to protect and preserve historic and culturally significant sites, not necessarily to restrict public access or limit economic growth and development. While opponents of the arena mine like to say that the mining is occurring near the Grand Canyon, the truth of the matter is that this new monument would take in lands that are hundreds of miles away from the actual canyon. Furthermore, the Antiquities Act was intended to be used sparingly and with careful consideration. It was never meant to be a tool for the federal government to assert control over vast swaths of public land. While the act does give the presidential broad authority to designate monuments, it's important to remember that this authority should be used judiciously and respect to the rights and needs of local communities. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. We'll enter those comments to re in the record. Next, we have Rob Frederick. Thank you, Madam Chair and Committee. For the record, we have, I think, 19 or 20 more that would like to speak. So if we could limit 
comments so to two minutes, that would be very helpful. And Susan McElpine, you'll be up next, please. Good evening, my name is Rob Frederick. I'm the line extension supervisor at Mojave Electric Cooperative. Founded in 1946, Mojave Electric is a not-for-profit utility providing reliable, cost-effective power to residents and businesses in Mojave, Yavapai, and Coconino counties. With more than 1,570 miles of line spanning areas from Bullhead City to Topak in the west, Wallapai to Burrow Creek in the south, and Nelson and the Grand Canyon Caverns to the east. Mojave Electric is remaining neutral on this issue, but would like to advise that reaching a carbon-free future will depend on resources for modular nuclear technology that will be complement renewable energies. Renewable energies such as solar and wind are intermittent and do not provide round-the-clock power. These sources of power will need to be balanced with non-fossil fuel technology such as nuclear, which will depend on uranium resources. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. See you then. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Welcome, Ms. McElpine. I think I'm, I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> it's for the record, please state your name. Thank you. My name is Susan McAlpine. It's okay. taken me 40 years to learn how to say that. So, and yes, I okay. am originally from New England. I just want, I'm a 20 year resident here in Mojave County, and I want to thank each one of the senators and each one of our representatives for coming here tonight and thank Ch Supervisor Lingenfelter and Angus for also being here. Um, this is, I believe, an extremely important special meeting, and I appreciate that. Um, as far as this proposal for a new federal national monument, my husband and I stand against it. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Donna Kraus. And next up after Ms. Krause will be Jennifer Esposito. I apologize for not being more prepared, but I have to say so far, everybody has been great. And I feel like that you definitely have educated yourselves on the matter. Um, I too participated in the hearings in Utah in 2010 for Mojave County. And at that time, it was just the Bracia pipe mining. That's all we wanted. I don't know where you live exactly in Arizona, but I can tell you right now that Colorado River still contains 1% uranium. And the technology that we use today would have pulled that out and replaced it with clean water. If you're on cap, you're drinking it. The other issue I wanna bring forth is Fredonia, Arizona. I don't know if have you ever been to Fredonia? Any of you been to Fredonia, Arizona? Yes, I have. Do you remember when it was actually a city that was thriving? I do remember that. Okay, so here's where we're at. We can be Fredonia, Arizona. The tribe can continue to grow more land. And I'll tell you something else. I was up in North Dakota for the oil boom. And I can tell you that tribes figured out real quick how to take care of their elders. There are fracking in North Dakota on their lands, and they're not blowing anything up. They're not losing their land. They are conscious. They're using that money to take care of their elders, to expand their schools, and to expand their health care services. And that's exactly what can happen with the Wallapai tribe. We have a choice to make. You have a choice to make. And I don't want to get politically aligned or into any of the rhetoric, but posturing wise, you are the ones who are going to have to make the choice for Arizona. 15 seconds. You got it. You are going to have to, you are the ones that we're trusting with our economic security, with our safety as a state, and with our health. And I don't, you know, I support your moratorium, absolutely, but I don't think it's going to be enough because I feel like it's deja vu all over again. 
And I'm wondering if in 10 years, as a much older woman, if I'm gonna have to come forward to another hearing to hear about how 20 years ago we said, and 10 years ago we said, and if we're just gonna be repeating the same thing over and over again, we need you guys to stand up for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Esposito, followed by Mike and his CEO, and I so apologize for mispronouncing your name. Jennifer Esposito, candidate for District 4 County Supervisor. Thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate it. I stand here in opposition to the designation of this new monument. I know that everybody has a lot of concerns about uranium. Um, I'm pretty sure that by 2032, uh, uranium mining might be obsolete, actually, because of something called Lenner low energy nuclear reaction. You might know it under the name of cold fusion. Um, Stanford, MIT, Texas Tech, everybody's pursuing grants on this right now. There's a lot of movement in that area. So my real concern with this, uh, aside from uh, the fact that it should be our land to, to make these decisions on, is that um, I believe that a fair amount of this land in Mojave County and in Arizona is uh, grazing land. So we can talk about what kind of energy we need uh, you know, in years from now, but what we need to talk about is feeding people today. Free range cattle predate Arizona statehood. And we, I don't think we're doing enough to protect the rights of our ranchers to produce food for our families. And so I don't know if that's an angle from any sort of legal opposition point of view, but the fact that, that those rights do predate Arizona being admitted to the union and giving up some sort of compromise um, with the with the statehood and the enabling act. I I attended that um, that presentation from Ken Ivory with the American Lands Council with Supervisor Angus. Yeah, so I've been all over that. I mean, I, I was really disappointed when Representative Thorpe's bill was vetoed by Governor Ducey uh, because that would have allowed us to. Uh, have demanded our land back by 2022, maybe we wouldn't even be having this meeting today. Maybe it wouldn't be an issue. So uh, I support um, anything that you can do to reduce or eliminate this. I wish you the best of luck. The federal government tends to do what it wants to do. And we all need to stand united in opposition to that for the people of this county and the people of this state. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And next up, after Mr. Ganesio, will be Barbara Carpenter. Madam Chair, represent representatives, senators, thank you for coming to our community today. My name is Mike Ganesio, 23-year resident of Mojave County. I live here in Kingman, and I'm president of the Arizona Cattle Growers Association. We stand in opposition to this. This land should be the state of Arizona's land. And it's leased by many ranchers who have mortgages on this land, who feed this state and this country. And this is going to take that away. People are going to lose their jobs, their businesses, and they're going to be in debt for something that they've had in their family for generations. And they're gonna be stuck with it. This is like Obamacare. You have to pass it before we tell you what you can do with it. This is not right, and we need to make it go away. I'm going to make this short because you have a lot of people coming up. So um, for the record, I, I'm very grateful for what Travis Lincoln Felter did with this. He put a lot of effort into this, along with all of you and our Board of Supervisors here. He's gone across the state to try and stand up for ranchers along with many of you. So we appreciate what you do and please keep up the good fight. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ms. Kirk, Madam Chair, real quick, Mike, real quick. I know we have a lot of speakers, but Mike, good seeing you again. Thanks for coming. Because we've been talking about uranium and things that are lost in the distance and nuclear, you put a face because it's small business, it's families that are out there that are gonna be kicked off the land. So appreciate that and thank you for being here and thanks for all the rest of what you do for our country. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.
Hey, Mike. Mike. Another question. Okay. We're not done with it yet. Get back over here. Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, my quick question. So I know, obviously, you uh, have the, the cattle growers. Were you at all contacted from this administration or anybody um, pushing for this, uh, for this land to be designated as a cattle grower? Were you at all brought into the conversation to discuss the impact it would have on your industry at any point of, of these discussions? Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Biasucci, no. No one has contacted us. Um, this is just, it's just a land grab. They don't care what we think. Um, it's not right. We need to stand up for our, for our people. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I may leave. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, let me finish. If I may leave you with one thought. <laughs> This is our state, and seeing this happen to us, and it's going to happen, and hopefully we can get it turned around, this body in front of us, from our state to our county officials, need to put up a fight and get our state and get the federal government out of it as much as possible. Yeah. And this should be an opening. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Any other questions? I think you're clear. Thank you. After Ms. Carpenter, I have Dennis Lang. Hi, I'm Barbara Carpenter, and I am a resident of Kingman. I love Mojave County, and I want to thank all of you, Honorable Chair, Senators, and Representatives, for being here today. You don't know how proud I am that you are our representatives. We are... We're on a precipice, and if we have to continue with our federal government confiscating our land, there will be nothing left for us, and that includes our tribes. I pray to God that you guys can do something. I don't know how, but I hope you can. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Yeah. Up next, after Mr. Lang, is James Barb. Burb. Burb. Thank you. Barber. I must say, Madam Chair, that I do enjoy this. I serve as the Vice Chair <laughs> at the Capitol, so I butcher names. And Senator Kerr never, she just gets the corrected names, so that's it's very I enjoyable for me. I don't know about that. <laughs> thank you. Welcome, Mr. Lang. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And everybody that's here, including all you elected officials. My name is Dennis Lang. I'm elected PC Miniman, and I believe in helping and working for politicians that I believe are good for the country, good for the state, and good for local politicians, for the, for the local government and local people. Uh, I'm here and I, uh, I'm, I'm so happy that I spoke after Travis Lincolnfelter and others that had all these tremendous, all kinds of good technical things to say, because I don't know all of them. I try to work for them. I try to work for the ones that I believe uh, were going to help us. And I, I have to say this, I, I, I listened to that person that, uh, uh, I forget his name, that he spoke for the Indians. If you'd come to my house, you'd see a poster in my house, fighting terrorism, since 1492. This country has things to be sorry about, and I'm afraid that's one of them. But we have to fight for our freedom. I think this is the best country in the world. There's no country better, but we have to do what we can to help our Indians because we did do them wrong. And I, I strongly believe in local government. I strongly believe we have to fight for our freedom in local government and what they're doing with, uh, with that uh, uh, taking care, taking away that uh, the color, uh, the, the land and everything around the Grand Canyon, it's not good. So we have to do and we have to fight and we have to fight for our local government and our local rules. 15 seconds. And keep them locally because other parts of Arizona uh, don't have the same uh, attitude or, or, or 
they don't care about the same things that we do locally. So that's all I have to say, and I appreciate all of you do, all what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if Mr. Scott Barvel will be ready to come up next, please. Go ahead. James, James Barber, Mojave Valley, Arizona. Um, okay, let's get quickly. Uh, during the Obama administration, on, Obama was standing on this side of the canyon and claimed that uh, Utah, they couldn't do any mining for clean coal on the Utah side. So this is not something new, what the uh, Biden administration is going to do. Nevada is 90% federal government owned. And if you want to know about that, think of Yucca Mountain. They're trying to figure out how they're going to store old, old uranium, et cetera. On mining, currently, Niger, which is under upheaval right now, provides significant amounts of uh, uranium. So that's where we're going to get it from, from hostile entities. Now, the big point. Uh, one point, this, this uh, land grab is 1.5% of the land in Arizona. And PILT, uh, payment in lieu of taxes, provides, uh, in 2021, provided $43.2 million to the state of Arizona. Now, in comparison, that does not even pay for four school districts a year in this county. We're talking about Lake Havasu, Bullhead City, Colorado River uh, Union, and Mojave Valley Elementary School District. It doesn't even pay for those school districts. And we still have other districts within this county. And think about the budget for Mesa. So PILT, the, 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 the amount when the federal government seconds. takes takes our land, look what we lose from the possibilities of uh, getting money for taxes for, for education. I mean, this is horrendous in this nature. Thank you. Thank you, sir. After Mr. Varvel, we have Mr. Emmett Sturgill. Well, good evening. Uh, thank all of you for coming. Um, I'm Scott Varvel. I live in Mojave County here for 27 years. Um, I'm a miner. I've retired a year ago. Modern mining technology and containment practices, very strictly gu guided by EPA, MSHA, uh, several other agencies don't allow for what happened back in the 40s and 50s. Um, some of the mines I've worked at, when they do the analyzing the tailings, they come back lower as you know, the contaminants, like we use cyanide in one of the mines I work for locally here. Um, our discharge was lower than the surrounding area's natural content. That's how efficient the recovery is. Um, grazing, um, yeah, you know, I mean, cow flatulence, I, I'm sure is causing global warming as is claimed, but I'm just not seeing it, okay? Then, then we have the hunting and fishing and the access for people to use that public land. Um, you know, that would shut that down. We've got a number of areas here in Mojave County that were set aside during the Obama administration that prohibited us from taking our old Jeeps and our old four wheelers just for a ride out in the desert. And I'm a, I, I own claims here in Arizona. Uh, we have eight federal mining claims and you know, they're, they fight tooth 15 and nail seconds. and they want to shut us down. And, you know, we've got a, uh, to me, a substantial amount of money, $25,000 to uh, guarantee that we do a reclamation on any disturbances we make. You know, this is, to me, this land grab is absurd. And, you know, I do sympathize with the gentleman that was speaking for the tribes. And yeah, they, they, you know, they got gypped, but then again, poor decisions were made on all sides historically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
After Mr. Sturgill, we have Barbara Thompson. Good evening. I want to thank all of you for taking the time and, and the effort to come up here to our county to hold these hearings. Um, and so thank you very much. My name is Emmett Sturgill. My wife and I are cattle ranchers. We have a cattle ranch about 22 miles north of Kingman here. I'm also the Public Lands Council representative for Arizona. <clears throat> and as the Public Lands Council representative, I get involved in all of the government issues that affect ranchers on public lands. I gotta tell you, <laughs> we're real busy right now. The government is coming after these ranchers. And I'm not gonna go on forever, but the real travesty and the real heartache of what's occurring here are those ranchers that are on that land. Some of them have been there for generations and generations. Some of them haven't been there for generations, but they're still ranchers and they spent a lot of money to buy those ranches. They have private property on those ranches. Some of those ranches are mortgaged. What, what are they going to do when the government takes their land away from them and pays them $35 an acre for it? How are they going to pay the bank back for that money? It's a, it's a real travesty. It's only one example of a million things that the Biden administration is doing to try to get ranchers off of public land. The one thing I want to compliment everybody in here for was the meeting in Flagstaff. Anybody that spoke against this was not allowed because they were booed. Jack Earhart come down here, nobody booed him. He didn't get shot walking back up the hill. Uh, that's the difference between us and them. So. Thank you for what you're doing. We do need to oppose this and they are gonna make it a designation and we're gonna to have to try to get it reversed. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spiritual. <laughs> After Ms. Thompson, we have Shane Stotler. Hi. Hi. Like the previous speakers, I thank you all for coming here and for the opportunity to speak. My name is Barbara Thompson. I'm a Lake Havasu resident. I moved to Lake Havasu in 1999, so I've been here for a while. And I thought I was going to be the only one, but I'm glad that I'm the second person to come up here to speak in favor of this monument. I don't want you to have the impression that there is nobody in Mojave County who's in favor of this designation. There are people. I'm one of them, and there are many others. And I simply want to state that for your consideration. There's, I won't go into all the reasons why we're short on time. There are many, uh, the, the, the discussion has been had. I just want to let you know that there are people here who are very much in favor of this. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. After Mr. Stotler, we have Danielle Ohl. Thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Shane Stotler and I am a, huh? I'm a fourth uh, generation rancher on the Arizona Strip. My, my kids will be fifth generation ranchers. Um, and I, be, on the Strip, we've also been ranchers in Utah on the, what is now known as the Grand Canyon Staircase Escalante Monument. And I am here to tell you that uh, monuments don't fix anything. They don't protect anything. They don't, um, they, they don't even allow, even though they say they're gonna be run by the BLM and the same regulations, uh, they still do not allow you to do the same thing you did before. They say, oh, you can run cows, but when your pond washes out, you can't fix it. So um, we need to fight this. Uh, let's. Let's not stand and just let it be. But thank you for your time. 
Thank you, for Madam me. Chair. Madam Chair, real quick, while, while you're there, I wanted to expand on that, Madam Chair. Expand on that. When, who's going to take care of the wildlife whenever your ranches are gone? Uh, nobody. Who puts the waters in? Who puts the, uh, brings the feed? It's a rancher. Thank you. Thank you. After Danielle, we have Chris, and I'm not going to say this right, either Henton or Heaton. Uh, welcome. Danielle Keck, for the record, I wrote the wrong name. <laughs> Sorry recently married. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here. And um, I, we really appreciate you coming all the way down here to Mojave County. And I have to say thank you so much for Supervisor Lingenfelter and for Hildy holding it down today. Today, we've, we've all been here since 9 a.m. And one of the main issues that we've been talking about today is the encroachment of solar coming in here. And I, today, I represented um, 333 residents in Golden Valley today who were opposed to these solar farms and these green climate things trying to come in on our residential lands where we, we the 333 residents that I represented today, we stand with support for cattle ranchers and them for our community providing for this. And so we are very strongly opposed to this monument and Golden Valley stand strong with you and we do not want this and we are what we are ready for a fight all right thank you thank you, thank you. and after chris we'll have wayne hurley uh madam chair senators representatives thank you for uh your time um i'm i'm hot I'm so hot about this monument. Um, I was in Flagstaff. I was booed. Um, this gets me worked up. I live in Kanab, Utah. I ranch on the Arizona Strip, sixth generation. My children are seventh. We have been there before the state of Arizona. My family has. The BLM was made in 1946. We have water rights, proof of water rights from the 1800s that we have filed on. And we will fight like hell to stop any monument. I have a thousand plus acres of private land included. We talked about 12,000 acres. A thousand of that is mine. The Department of Interior and Flagstaff a month ago said they were not taking private land. I showed her the map. She was shocked. This is a problem. They're coming after our private land, private water rights. We talked about maintaining it and taking care of the wildlife. There is no live water on the Arizona Strip. I have 33 ponds, six catchments, six wells, and three springs that I own, maintain. Those mule deer that they hunt drink out of my water. If I'm gone, they're gone. I, um, I agree with the Cattlemen's Association. They are shoving this down our throat with no plan. There is no thought to any management plan. We have no clue what they're doing. They're saying you're going to get a monument and you're going to like it. And they're not telling us anything about it. They want to talk about protection of cultural sites. Look at Bears Ears that Obama created. We have graffiti. We are Instagramming these cultural sites. We have graffiti. Seconds. Man, we have graffiti. We have human waste. We're ruining it. If they want to protect cultural sites, they don't make it a monument. They let the ranchers take care of it. I have an old uranium mine on one of my permits I lease. The uranium mine did a dang good job of restoring it, reclaiming it. No one would even know it's there. I appreciate your support. I'm on the city council in Kanab, Utah. We have passed resolutions against this. King County, Washington County, Iron County in Utah, all have passed resolutions in opposition. We are fighting with Mojave County and with you, senators and representatives. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Chris. Chris. Any questions? This gentleman over in the end here in the suit, would you give him your contact information, you please? Bet. I would love to. Um, yes, Representative. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I just want to get, get this on the record because there's reports. I, I read one in the, um, I think the AZ Central or one of the main uh, news groups, but they said no private land will be affected. I just want to make sure this is stated correctly, that you are saying that is incorrect. A hundred percent incorrect. From the, from the latest maps that I can tell, I have over a thousand acres. And they put out, when I was in Flagstaff three weeks ago, they said, 
there's no private. Have you seen the updated maps? And I hadn't seen them at that point. So I asked for them. Can you put this screen here? If I throw my iPad right here, can we put the camera? Uh, put it flat on put top of Put it on the that. ledge in front of you. Right here. Yes. Oh, you're going to see all my pictures. <laughs> they are appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> we can go to that camera now and we'll go right through it. I have a little show and tell here. All right. This is the proposed monument, this green area. A lot of those white sections are the state lands that they're cutting out, but they're picking and choosing. If you take a look at their map and you look at all those, they're not taking all the Sitla lands out. They're not. What's fascinating, uh, there's a Paiute band, Kayabat band of Paiutes um, that have some, the reservation, which is this darker blue area, okay? That it, you can't even see it on this. Um, anyways, it, it's right to, it's inside the pink above the, uh, above the green. They have some private there that they bought. They're not including all of that private land that they bought. They want this monument and they're not even putting their private in, but they're putting mine in. That green is mine that's circled. Look at this map. That's private ground. Look at the stuff next to it. That's their private ground that they bought. It's a problem. Okay. Let's go here. Private ground, straight below. This is Pipe Springs. You're probably familiar with it. The Kayabab Reservation, straight below. That area that's highlighted is private ground. Look, 640 acres right there. That little top section, my private ground. My grandfather homesteaded that piece of property right before Arizona got rid of the Homesteading Act. This is personal. They are coming after our ranches, our livelihoods, our jobs, our homes. This is unreal. I spoke in Flagstaff about how this is un-American. It is un-American. We do not come after people's jobs and private property in this country. Madam Chair, just a yes. follow up real quick to that point. Did, did they ever contact you at all? Have you been in any of these discussions? No, I, I had that in my note because I was hoping someone would ask me. The White House has not reached out to me. They're going after my land, and they hey, haven't talked to me. They haven't reached out to me either, so we're good. Yeah, no, we're don't, on don't the feel, same page. Don't feel like you've been left out. <laughs> I think I'm in great company, so. Yeah, but I, I do want to make sure, that, I mean, this is something where your land is being impacted, correct? Your land is yeah. essentially going to be taken from you, and you have never been in a single conversation about that process or this being a, a possibility. No, and, and when I was in Flagstaff, I asked these questions. I said, I want answers. Tell me what your intent is. What is your plan? You can't just draw with a crayon around property and say this is going to be in a monument. And they're doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. There you go. Question for you. Um, so this is on the Utah side of the border. Do you, do you have any information as to whether private land is going to be shoved in this monument on the Arizona side of the border? No, this, sir, this is all in Arizona. I live in Utah. My ranch is all in Arizona. We are below the state line. This is Arizona. This is Arizona private ground that they're taking. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, can you tell me if they put, put your land then in a monument, what is going to be the impact on the local tax revenues up here? Do you know? I, I don't have the slightest. I, I have no clue what their plan is. But, but I pay taxes to Mojave County. Trust me. You guys get them. And I enjoy paying them when I have representatives that I have met today, I will pay those taxes all day long when I have men and women that will fight with me and for me. Well, Madam Chair, I appreciate, appreciate you being here. I know you're, you're this steamed that they didn't consult you when they're coming after your land. They're coming after our state. We're pissed off too. Yeah, I love it. I appreciate that. Madam Chair. Madam thank Chair. you. Yes, Senator Borelli. Yes, thank you. I just to, to that point, would you support us if we cut taxes? <laughs> so being an elected official myself, I understand the need of taxes, uh, but I would definitely support you even more if you cut them. But I understand <laughs> it. We need taxes to, to function. I understand that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Chris. After Mr. Hurley, we have Don Martin. Name's Wayne Hurley, been here since 1979. I love Kingman, it's my hometown. 
Quote a nice speech, but I'm going to do it in two minutes or less here, so pay up. Secondly, the first argument for this monument is that the mining will scar the land. The tribes say this with a straight face, but they dug up and sold 8 million tons of coal per year for almost 50 years from the Black Mesa. The Hopis and all of them have no problem with mines as long as they reap the financial and economic rewards. If the mining sites in question were on the reservation land, the tribes would be digging their way to China as we speak. 400 acres of open mine at Cayenta, but done for the right people is no problem. The next thing they always bring up is we're going to protect the water, the aquifer. I presume we're discussing about the Navajo aquifer, a source of pristine drinking water. The argument is that it'll be followed by mining and other environmental developments. The tribes weren't worried about abusing the aquifer when they were affiliated with the Black Mesa pipeline. This pipeline used the pristine aquifer water to transport coal in a 50-50 coal slurry mixture 300 miles to the Mojave Generating Station in Laughlin, Nevada. They took 3 million gallons of water per day of their pristine water, mixed it with pulverized coal for almost 50 years. Do the math. You can water a lot of sheep on 45 billion gallons of water. Once again, abusing the aquifer is in the eye of the beholder or is dependent on who reaps the financial seconds. and economic rewards. The last thing I want to complain about is the stupid name they're giving it. It's a mixture of a couple of Indian languages. I want to say that a long time ago here in Kingman, we had a park called the William Anua Park. I loved it. I didn't know what the hell the name meant. It was an Indian name here in town. But they changed it to the Firefighters Memorial. I do not know why. The name I propose you offer them is Idyllic Monument. And that would stand for Ideological Driven Young Liberals Limiting Intelligent Consensus. <laughs> Thank Madam you. Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair. I... I just wanted to ask the gentleman if he knew how close to China they got when they were digging that mine. <laughs> I'm hoping they stop halfway. Thank you. And after Mr. Martin, we have Gilbert Smobby. Good evening, uh, senators, representatives. My name's Don Martin. Uh, give you a little background. I'm the past president and... Uh, of the Mojave Sportsman Club, the largest outdoor recreational club in Mojave County. I was also their government liaison for over 10 years, and I worked with a lot of government officials up on the Strip. I was part of a committee of the BLM up there, that, and we worked on issues involving the Arizona Strip in this country that you're talking about. I'm gonna tell you a little secret about this whole thing. This just didn't get started. 20 years ago, I'm a conservationist, hardcore, believe me. 20 years ago, we were fighting a battle. We saw the plan. They wanted everything north of the Colorado River put into the Grand Canyon National Park. They didn't want anything except a national park up there. We saw it coming. And those of us that were in the fight, we said, you know what they're going to do? They're going to take it piece by piece by piece because they can't get it all in one lump. Since that time, I watched Bill Clinton designate the Parashant National Monument. I saw him uh, designate the Vermilion National Monument. I saw all these monuments. Now, I've worked on the Arizona Strip for 40 years I operated a big game guide service up there, and my footprint is all over that country. And I know a lot of these ranchers that are talking about it. I met them. I saw what they've done out there. I saw that what we've done as sportsmen. 15 seconds. There's, there's 242 springs up there on the, on the Arizona Strip. So, and, and I know as I'm standing here tomorrow, Biden's going to say that's a monument and we're stuck with it. But what it doesn't say for all of us is we don't like it, we don't want it, 
It goes against our customs. It goes against what we believe into. And we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to get it back somehow, some way. So keep up the fight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After Mr. Smobby, we'll have Troy Henry. Madam Chair, Representatives, Senators, thank you for your time tonight. Um, my name is Gilbert Smavey. I've resided in Mojave County for the last 13 years, but prior to that, I lived up in Coconino County for 10 years. When the Clinton administration in 2000 came in and did the three monuments, I worked for planning and zoning at that time. Um, I can tell you the, the confusion and the frustration that just happened at a stroke of the pen. They had no uh, master plan. They had nothing. Ranchers were wondering what roads they could go on. They closed stuff off. It was just confusion. So one thing I did want to read, just bring up the Antiquities Act. Again, it was basically intended for historical or scientific interest. Also, it states in there that it should be confined to the smallest area compatible with proper care and management of the objectives of that are to be protected. So that's one. Um, I just you know, want to ask for your recommendations and, and stuff tonight, because it's a really important area. And I think that obviously it shows. Thank you very much. Thank you. After Mr. Henry, we'll hear from Daniel Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hearing, hearing us today and, and being here. Um, my name's Troy Henry. I'm with the Utah Farm Bureau. I'm a sixth generation rancher in Southern Utah and in Southern Utah, we love Northern Arizona. It, that Arizona Strip is one of the coolest pieces of ground you'll ever be on. Thousands of acres, and there's not a ton of uses for it other than mining and cattle grazing. You can take cattle that can go out on landscape that nothing else can use and turn it into an, an efficient uh, food source full of protein. And um, I think we undervalue our food in this country by quite a bit. Um, during, during COVID, we, we found that out and found out that local supply chains are important and we need to maintain those. 90% uh, of American ranches are still family owned, small, um, small acreage farms like the Arizona Strip. And we're, we're frustrated as everybody that they're misusing the Antiquities Act to uh, bludgeon us with. Um, it wasn't the use. We're, we're skipping the, the congressional process. We elected uh, people to make these decisions, and they're being short-circuited. Um, the, the other thing, there's two more things I want to hit on really quickly. Um, when in 1996, when the Grand Staircase National Monument was um, put in place, like previous commenters have said, nobody knew what the outcome was going to be. Well, we got up there. I lived right on the boundary of the Grand Staircase, and no more water catchments, suspended AUMs. Um, yeah, they're still grazing on it, but it is cumbersome. Um, our county officials cannot keep up with seconds. foot traffic. We, when you designate a national monument, you invite the world, and they want to come see it. They ask you, where's the staircase? Well, you're on it, buddy. This is it, and it all looks the same. Um, the county doesn't have the resources to take care of the number of people that are coming in, search and rescue. Uh, when Trump shrunk the monument, it was the perfect size. We, we protected slot canyons and, and sen sensitive areas, and, and that's all been done away with. When and if this goes through, language is important. We, we found out that there were some provisions for grazing when, when Trump redesignated the monument, and those were taken out when it was redesignated by this administration. Please pay attention to the language. If nothing else, let's preserve this important cultural resource. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. I'm Daniel Harris with the Arizona Farm Bureau Federation. Uh, I'm their government relations manager. Uh, and we definitely appreciate the opportunity to submit uh, these comments and address our concerns and our opposition uh, to the proposed Baj Nuavjo Ita Kukveni Grand Canyon National Monument. 
Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was brave enough to try. The proposed national monument would place 1.1 million acres of land in Arizona under a new designation encompassing both private property and state trust land, as you've heard today. The designation uh, is hardly necessary, uh, given the fact that federal lands are already managed under provisions such as the Federal Land Policy Management Act. Uh, and furthermore, a national monument designation can limit or prohibit land uses, including grazing, forest management, and recreational activities, such as hunting and fishing, as well as uh, agricultural uh, producers um, supporting those uh, those industries, such as uh, the wildlife that hunting and fishing requires. While there are provisions in the proposal to allow for certain of these items, uh, we are definitely concerned with the lack of language uh, supporting the continuation of them in the future. Going into the Antiquities Act just briefly, the Antiquities Act was established in 1906 as a means to preserve historic landmarks, historic and prehistoric structure, structures, and other objects of historic or scientific interest. Their land mass was to be confined to the smallest area uh, compatible with proper care and management of the objects so that to be protected. This directive is especially poignant in Arizona, where less than 20% of the land seconds. is privately owned. The federal government controls nearly 50% of the land, and the remaining is controlled by the state. Consequently, any proposed monument designations are met with concern, especially when private and state land is encumbered without adequate stakeholder engagement. Uh, Arizona Farm Bureau is concerned with the impacts to grazing rights, access, ability to maintain and improve those allotments, and therefore cannot support a national monument designation without recognizing and protecting these uses. We have shared these concerns with both the BLM and the White House and realize this is a done deal uh, from day one. But we will continue to fight and preserve and protect Arizona agriculture. Thank you very much. With that, I'll uh, be yeah. open to any questions. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Any Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. All right, right, I that think that concludes our speakers. Yeah, I just want to, uh, for the record, I'm going to introduce, uh, for the record, um, Westerman's um, uh, release on this, and I'll read the particulars. Um, proposals to designate a new 1.1 million acre national monument in Arizona land that is rich in uranium deposits and has historically been open for multiple uses. House Committee on Natural Resources, Chairman Bruce Westerman uh, issued the following statement in response. This administration's lack of reason knows no bounds and their actions suggest that President Biden and his radical advisors won't be satisfied until the entire federal estate is off limits and America is mirrored in dependency on our adversities for the natural resources. This land belongs to the American people, not any administration or bureaucrats who think they make the news, the laws. Both native and non-native peoples have benefited from open access of these acres for centuries and use their current concurrently for recreation, cattle grazing, hunting, and more. Researchers have also discovered that this area is home to some of the richest uranium deposits in the country. But when we have an administration that is a hammer in search for a nail, Suddenly, we're seeing our own resources being locked away for decades. Uh, it speeds no, uh, with no end in sight. Minnesota, Colorado, and now potentially Arizona have all been victims of this administration war on the American economy and the mining sector that is so important to economic growth and security. It fails to see any rationale in the proposed proposal beyond a selfish political agenda that locks away the very resources we depend on for our daily lives. If President Biden moves forward with this insane proposal, I will fight it in Congress and advocate for responsible stewardship of our resources. So I'm going to enter that into record. 
Uh, members, you have a resolution in front of you in your package that you've read. Um, I'm going to read the last two pages, uh, and we have copies. Okay. Uh, do we have another supervisor that... Supervisor Bishop? I'm sorry, we didn't see you there. Welcome, welcome. Madam Chairwoman, uh, State Representative, State Senate. Um, I just arrived. I had some pressing, pressing issues to handle at home. Our, our meeting didn't get out until shortly this meeting began. So I took care of those matters and hurried back here. And I appreciate Supervisor Angus reading my statement into the record. I just wanted to introduce myself quickly and thank all of you for coming to Mojave County and thank all the uh, constituents in the audience, both for and against, for uh, stating their their uh, support and their opposition. But I want to say just one more time, I strongly, strongly oppose this national monument. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank coming you, back. Travel safely. Okay, I'll read the whereas is, uh, be it resolved, and then we'll do uh, closing comments, and then we'll take a vote. Be it resolved, that the below signed members of the Arizona House and Senate leadership members of the Natural Resource Energy and Water Committees and the Arizona House Representatives and Arizona State Senate and members of the Arizona House Representatives Committee on Land, Agriculture and Rural Affairs oppose the designation of this proposed. And for the record, I'm gonna have staff actually spell out the name of the Grand Canyon National Monument uh, number two, we oppose the designation of any national monument near the Grand Canyon National Park that seeks to limit critical minerals, metal and aggregate mining, cattle grazing, and multiple use of activities in the Arizona Strip or anywhere else in the state of Arizona. And oppose the further special use designation, conversion, withdrawal, or reservation of federal controlled lands in Arizona for multiple use that results in the net loss of land, water, and natural resources or economic or recreational activities without the express consent of Congress, the Arizona State Legislature, and the members of the local community. And be it further resolved that the designation of the proposed, again, we're gonna spell out the correct name of the Grand Canyon, new proposed Grand Canyon, National Monument exceeds the President's authority under the Antiquities Act of 1906 and would be in violation of the General Mining Act of 1872, Taylor Grazing Act of 1934, Multiple Use Sustained Yield Act of 1960, and Federal Land Policy and Management Act of 1976, and be it further resolved that no additional national monuments parks, wildlife refuges, conservation areas, areas of critical environmental concern, wild and scenic rivers, wilderness, wilderness characteristics area, areas, or other federal special use designation or mineral, land, water, or other national resource withdrawals or reservation should be declared or pursue, pursued in Arizona without, number one, the consent of Congress. Number two, the consent of the Arizona legislature when in session. Number three, the uh, consent of the members of the local communities that would be negatively impacted by the designation, withdrawal, or reservation. And four, the completion of the comprehensive economic impact study that analyzes a community, co 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 tang tang my, I might, it's late tangible and measurable input impacts of the state, local, and national economy of removing the additional land, water, and natural resources from economic uh, production and that demonstrates that the removal of such land, water, and or natural resource represents the least burden and cost method to achieve the desired natural, historical, environmental protection. So be it further resolved, that below signed members hereby pray that President Joseph R. Biden does not designate the proposed, again, spelling out the correct name of the Grand Canyon National Monument. We, uh, be it further resolved, this resolution 
is effectively is effective immediately adopted the seventh day of August 2023 and we will take a vote and then sign this document Madam Chair uh, please yeah, go ahead and make the motion at this point okay Madam Chair yes Madam Chair I move that the House Natural Resources, Energy, and Water Committee recommend that we accept a memorial in opposition to the U.S. Department of the Interior's proposed designation of the Secretary will properly record the name of the Grand Canyon National Monument as it now stands and further recommend to the full legislature that they also approve of the opposition to this stated monument when we meet for session. You've heard the motion. Um, all those on the House, are, are we doing a individual or by voice vote voice vote. all those in favor aye. Uh, aye. Aye. all those opposed nay uh the ayes appear to have it do have it so ordered the house approved the monument the resolution senate thank you madam chair i move that the uh, the senate natural resource energy and water committee recommended we accept a memorial in opposition to the u.s um Department of the Interior's proposed designation of the new, and we will have the name spelled out, Grand Canyon National Monument as it now stands, and further recommend to the full legislature they also approve of the opposition to this stated monument when next in session. Thank you, Senate members. You've heard that motion. Is there any further discussion? Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Here's the eyes have it, do have it, so ordered. <clears throat> Wait a minute, one more. We have one more. Uh, the land and uh, land and water, land and rural affairs. Madam Chair, I move that the House uh, land land agriculture and rural affairs committee uh, recommend that we accept a memorial in opposition to the U.S. Department of Interiors. Proposal designated of the new Grand Canyon National Monument as it is now stands and further recommended to the full legislature. They also approve of the opposition to this state monument when next in session. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those oppo opposed say a. Uh, the ayes have it, do have it, so ordered. Thank you. Uh, any closing comments that anybody would like to make? We'll start down at this end. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and thank you to all of you that have been here. It's an honor to be here in your beautiful beautiful land. Um, just to summarize my remarks very quickly, this is a massive government overreach. Testimony has shown that a, a smaller portion could have been agreed to. It is a direct violation of at least the 5th, 10th, and 14th amendments that I can see, and a violation of a host of other acts. The government has not proven their authority for this, and I am not a constitutional lawyer, but I am terrified of the waste of the litigation that is going to take place after this. Um, Arizona is the second largest mining state in the nation. This is nothing more than going to weaken the strength of Arizona and all that we do. Um, I want the tribes to hear from me um, how much um, we love them and care about them, but this will have great repercussions that will affect them in a negative way, and I have no doubt of that. Um, I am uh, offended that Biden, who did not even step foot in this state while he was campaigning as president, now is going to come through for a land grab um, at this time. Um, finally, as a member of the Health and Human Services Committee, I want it on the record that uranium is very powerfully needed um, for radioisotopes and are crucial to healthcare in its application for diagnosing and treating a host of light threatening diseases. Also for nuclear medicine and all of the advanced scanning systems and is just one of the many consequences that we will have by not having the um, right to have our own uranium. Imagine an Arizona or an America where we have the ability to cure disease and diagnose it with a snap of a finger, but we have to beg China or Kazakhstan for the uranium to do a simple CAT scan. 
For Arizona to forever be stripped of our access to our own uranium will increase the cost of health care, decrease the access to life-saving diagnostics, and cost the lives of Arizonans and the most disadvantaged Arizonans, most importantly. Thank you. And with that, I'm an eye for this. I'd like to lodge a formal complaint having to follow Barbara Parker. I hate following her. Uh, so the, uh, the founders, at the, at the founding of the nation, they, there was a great argument between Federalist and Anti-Federalist. And what the Anti-Federalist argued is that a powerful national government would abuse the states. They would impose their will upon the people of the states. And the states were most able to be able to deal with the, effect, the effects of the, of the people. Mining is national security. And whether they're undermining it directly for some reason, we don't know. They are. They're undermining our national security. Mining is self-sufficiency. This has nothing to do with the environment. It doesn't have anything to do with cultural lands or anything like that. Those are excuses that they're using to make sure we are beholden to other nations. One can only wonder, maybe a Hunter Biden or someone like him, and maybe saved 10 for the big guy, who made money on this deal? Thank you. So with that said, I go back to the original uh, document I talked about, the Executive Order 14008. And we heard from testimony of Supervisor Langenfelter and the uh, gentleman that spoke for the tribes. It doesn't appear that 14008 was briefed to the tribes. So they wanted this land deal. They want this monument. And little do they know, under this executive order, once this goes through, the Biden administration directs BLM to search this land for locations of wind and solar. Just like they're doing all around the country, this directs the BLM. It circumvents BLM rules. It circumvents the Fair Land Policy Management Act of 1976, not to mention the, the takings clause and the Fifth Amendment. We, we've heard testimony in here that public lands are, are in this, but we also heard private lands are in this. I've heard no mention of eminent domain and fair compensation to those ranchers. We had a bill in our committee uh, this year that we tried to pass that it, that it didn't make it through the governor, but ranchers have tons and tons of personally owned property and materials on these lands. Is the government gonna reimburse them? I've read nothing of that. They, they don't even acknowledge that there's private land in this, this taking. Uh, our, our action tonight will probably be meaningless at this point as Biden has already made up his mind and has written executive orders dating back to 2021 for this specific issue. So I hope the tribes are listening to this because they're gonna get their wish in the short term. The land will be used for wind and solar according to the executive order and hopefully we can reverse this with a new administration. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And the public that's watching on video can't see that there's over 100 concerned citizens in the room that are taking participating with us. And we appreciate you guys for being here and speaking and or just being in, in the audience. You know, we, we know that Arizona is known as a copper state mining. We always know that. But we are also known for tons of more, a lot more critical minerals and aggregates that supply the world. Like Penny Pugh said in July 21st, the House, the Congressional House Committee on Oversight had a subcommittee on critical minerals in Goodyear, Arizona. The United States is reliant on 43 of 50 of those minerals from outside of our economy. They come from, they're all imports. And Madam Chair, I had wrote a letter to their committee and it kind of highlights why we did this resolution. I'd like to enter it in the record. I got a copy for each of the chairs here so we can, and I'll send a digital copy out to, to highlighting the importance of critical minerals like uranium and other things that are important to our state. This way we could be our own economy. If we're gonna produce electric vehicles down in the valley and electric batteries, we ought to be able to produce the minerals and those things that are required to be able to be self-reliant as a country and as a state. This is an overreach. We know the 1906 Antiquities Act, like was stated, was not envisioning this. And so I don't wanna keep repeating everybody, all the testimony, but in my legislative district 25, we have the largest mine and Ms. Kerr's and Ms. Carbone's, the largest nuclear power plant in the world, in the United States. And so 
requiring uranium. And we also need to make sure that there's new stuff coming online, the small scale nuclear needs to have access to that, like we've been talking about. When I drove over here from Pine Top this morning, I passed windmills, we passed uh, solar, we passed Choya, coal fired generating plant that's getting shut down in 2025. This administration is pushing for the Green New Deal, and yet they're trying to, t to stop and take a land grab to pre prevent us from being able to be self-reliant and self-sufficient. So we need to take that in consideration. We'll do everything we can to stop it. And I, too, uh, just want to say thank you for everybody for coming in uh, such a short notice. And uh, I know, you know, everybody has uh, their lives going on, but this is something that's obviously, obviously extremely important. And, and I want to kind of touch on what uh, Chairwoman um, Griffin stated about how combined local, state, tribal, federal government control in Arizona is at 87% of all the land, leaving 13% of Arizona land to private owners. So here we are now with them about to take another 12,000 acres of that land. And whether, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, right, if you're in, in favor, you're against, the main problem here is the fact that this was done without the input from the farmers, the ranchers. The, I don't know if the uranium mines were consulted in any of this. I know I wasn't. I know, I don't think Representative Gillette was or Senator Borelli, this being in our district, we weren't consulted at all. That is the, the part that I think, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, you should be disappointed with, right? Because we should be included, every single one of us. It doesn't matter if in the end that they decide to go forward with this, but why isn't there an input from the community that it's impacting directly? You know, this could have been easily solved. You could have brought in the ranchers and the farmers and the cattlemen and, and everybody to say, okay, where do you use the land? What do you use it for? Why is it necessary? For them to at least have an idea of what maybe they could take and what they shouldn't take. The fact that everybody was left out of this process is something that is extremely, extremely disappointing and concerning. This is not how government works, right? It's about transparency. It's about bringing everybody to the table and doing what's best for the community, period. And so I come back to and leave it at this. The 10th Amendment's in the Constitution for a reason, right? That means state rights. We must do better at the legislature to flex those muscles of the 10th Amendment and gain back our power, our control. Because when you have 87% of our land that's not controlled, you have the federal government that has the map showing how much red is being controlled by the federal government, that's a problem. The 10th Amendment is not being utilized correctly in this state. So I promise you as a state legislator, and I'm sure my colleagues will do the same, is we need to push legislation to give the power back to the state, back to local control. Because we know what to do with our land and our money better than any federal government will ever have. And that is an obvious thing, whether it's this situation or our border, it's time for us to, to do what we need to do for ourselves at the local level. And I appreciate all of you. I hope that you continue to make that fight as well. The only way it stops is if people speak up and do what, what needs to be done to bring control back to us. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Uh, I, I wanted to start off by opening up, yielding my time to the Democrats that came from the legislature. Oh, they're not here. So that should tell you everything of how the Democrat Party thinks about rural Arizona and natural resources. Because you're starting to see this trend that you will own nothing and you will be happy. That the powers that be in Washington, D.C., one of the best things that Donald Trump ever did during his presidency was make BLM move out to Colorado. How much easier would it be for us to have representation and talk to our members of Congress and talk with these unelected bureaucrats of how they're affecting our states? I remember as a kid working on families' ranches at the Trace Alamos in La Paz County. Every single year, the BLM would just move the goalpost. Every single time we'd get to it, and they'd move it every single time. The same exact thing happens here in Mojave County. That all these farmers and these ranchers and miners who are impacted by all these families that make up the, this local economy, what's so important that Washington, D.C., these bureaucrats don't care. Obviously, the Democrats in the Arizona legislature don't care. Every single member here has come because we care about this situation. We care what you guys are going through. And I cannot wait until January 20th, 2025, when Donald Trump rips up this executive order with Paul Gosar standing there and Arizona can finally start taking its ground back. So thank you guys for being here today. <laughs> I'll start down at this end. I don't have to wait till the end here. Uh, first of all, I want to just thank everybody for showing up this, this evening and, and the long day for some of you that 
been working on this issue. Um, I, I'll keep this short, but I'll tell you what I saw here, and, I, and, and it, it, it's, uh, I, I find it fascinating, and, and it's why I love this state. Arizona is mining, it is ranching, it is farming, and it is logging and hunting and fishing. When the federal government wants to come over here in our state and try to tell us what we're going to do, generations that we built this state, I'll tell you right now, everyone here, we're all going to fight back. We will stand with you, we'll stand for you, and we'll fight hard. Thank you. Thank you all for, uh, for being here tonight, uh, going this time, and thank you for having me up here. It's my first time in, in this, uh, this building, let alone really hanging out in this town, and I'm impressed with all of you. Uh, your hearts and your souls are all about this state, about your homes, about this country. Um, I think some of the points that my colleagues over here, uh, I won't say on the left, but to this side of the dais, have brought up are very important points. And especially Representative Biasucci, who, you know, we've worked on a number of things together. Um, and his point about states' rights is paramount here. So what I want to say, rather than beat the drum and repeat everything, I'm going to put the Attorney General of Arizona and the Governor of Arizona on notice right now. You're going to do your job with us or without us, but we're going to get this done and bring it back to making it right. The federal government's too damn fat and big. It needs to be reduced in size. And uh, we got to stand for our state, and we're going to do it. So God bless you all. Say your prayers for us. That's paramount here. We'll get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all for coming and, and uh, welcoming us up here. It's a long drive for me. I'm actually way down here. Now I'm way up here. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the red. I don't know how much more they need, as, as I said earlier. It's an appetite that's crazy and you notice they never take from the east it's always from the west we're always the playground rural rural regions are more of your playground right continue to just take and take and i don't believe the founders had that in mind obviously especially when i read you earlier on uh, from our constitution itself and it says and exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature. I don't know, any of you consent to this? Nope. I've, I heard about this right over the weekend. I was out of state. Actually, I was at a mock convention of states. I, w I was at that in Virginia where 49 state had come together to talk about redresses of the federal government just like this. The things we have to fight as as members of the legislature for the people closest to the people and we got these people in washington certainly the president from delaware just taking a pin and saying these belong to the federal government now i know the founders didn't envision this whatsoever taking without the state's consent once again it's maddening, it's crazy. We must stand up. In land management, who are the original environmentalists? Our ranchers, our farmers, they know what to do with our lands. They, they're not gonna destroy the land so they can't grow cattle, they can't grow crops, can't make these clothes we wear. They are everything. Without them, everybody from the cities, you can't eat. They probably don't care if they're clothed, I guess, but at the end of the day, our food, our clothes, everything in here is mined. That's what comes out of rural Arizona. I'm saddened there are gonna be plenty of regulations and rules that come down the pike. We, we heard from our our small businesses, as we said, from our ranchers, the farmers, this is gonna hurt them. This is gonna hurt an economic engine that is established out there. 
And with this inflation happening now and the receding of the economy, do we need to continue to do more of this? I guess so, Mr. Biden. You know, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm just very upset at the sad day we're in. And I am glad we're up here and able to talk with you and hear the redresses you all have so that we can actually take it to our uh, uh, federal representatives. And we're going to be doing that over this next period. And it's my hope that we can switch out ministrations this next time. And maybe instead of just getting rid of the executive order, they follow the constitution and they give us our lands back. And with that, I appreciate you guys. Madam Chair. Good, thank you. You know, I, I'm sitting here listening to some folks and, and I'm like, I'm, I'm contemplating, um, I'm surprised the, the tribes banded together to support this. Historically, we always hear this garbage, you know. Uh, it was the Spanish that took the land from them. And then the Mexicans came in and took it from the Spanish. They enslaved them. Well, we came in and we honor their sovereignty that they can actually still govern themselves and honor them, embrace them. You know, the, everything that was put in for their citizenship, full citizenship and giving them voting rights, honoring that was all led by Republicans, 100%. They had to drag Democrats to it. Uh, you know, Mexico literally enslaved, and the Spanish even enslaved the, the natives in Mexico. They don't have reservations there. They just, they're forced to assimilate and they're forced to be a, a lower class. So I'm actually really surprised that our Native American tribes are actually falling for this garbage. How many times has the federal government, the, what do they call it? You see the movies, The Great White Father in, in Washington. How many times have they stuck to their word? And this executive order, it's just a piece of paper. It's just an EO that they could change on a whim because it's not bound by law, technically. Because they subverted and went around in Congress. Enough's enough. Enough is enough. This is what happens when we allow and give too much authority to unelected bureaucrats and bureaucrat agencies and organizations. We, we've seen it a lot of times. You know, I'm not going to disparage our, our Republican staff in the House and the Senate. But I said this when on city councils. I've seen it on supervisors, you know, county boards, where they just went ahead and went, went with whatever the staff said, which we kind of we kind of nickname as staff infection, because especially on the on our minority side, they just want to go ahead and listen and they don't want to do the research. They don't want to do put the time in and represent and do their job. We had what Friday notice. We made sure that we were here. And I, once again, I want to thank my colleagues for being here. You took the time to come out to Mojave County, Northwestern Arizona, and you knew you got on, you knew you got out of Maricopa County when you got on Rattle Road. <laughs> because that's what happens. We finally were able to fix some things this year and thank you for that. So once again, I wanna thank you all for coming out here. Unfortunately, the minority side, they didn't have enough time to prepare to come up here and see what real Arizona looks like outside of the state of Maricopa. And again, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Man, the, the past couple months, couple years have been a rude wake up call for, for me. You know, seeing what's, what's been happening with this regime the prosecution of political opponents, suppression of speech. Now they're coming in and, and taking your land. Kind of wonder, you know, is this a different America? 
Has it been like this my whole life and I never realized it? I don't know. But there's one thing I do know. Is that we can, we can sit up here and talk, you know. The people in this federal empire are never going to listen to us unless we make them. So I got a task for everybody in this room because I think we can make them. You see a Biden administration official in your town? Don't serve them at your restaurant. Don't pour them a drink at your bar. If you are a public official, cut off all voluntary cooperation with the civil agencies of the executive branch. There are not that many of them. There are an awful lot of us, and they cannot control this country without our consent. This is my state. This is your county. It's time for all of us to not just tell them hell no, but show them hell no. Madam Chair, I, I just want to thank everybody for being here, representative senators as well. And I want to commend you guys for having the restraint and respecting the other side that did come and speak after hearing that you guys were booed. So that takes a lot of restraint from us to just to stay quiet. So I want to commend you with that for the sake of time. Again, thank you for having us here. Uh, <clears throat> the thing that affected me the most in, in hearing in hearing the public testimony was just that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, we're losing our freedoms and um, also just the livelihood that is being challenged by, you know, uh, that is being challenged in the lives of ranchers, farmers, and some of the <clears throat> economic development that is happening here. It is amazing to be able to hear your testimonies. And we want to be, you know, hearing your testimonies, we want to be your voice at the state level and come against, you know, and we know that there's a new world order that is being pushed by the Biden administration. We know that the, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the social agenda that's out there with the uh, UN and all of that, that's really coming against us. But one of the things that I want to let you know is that we live in the greatest country in the world. And we have, we have an abundance of resources and we have, to, uh, we have to make sure that we stay free to be able to use those resources. And so we're, you know, we stand together with you. I stand together with you, the citizens of Mojave County in, in opposing um, this land grab here at the Grand Canyon National uh, Monument. We're losing our freedoms right now, but what we're, gonna, what we're needing to do is we're needing to fight them and we're gonna fight them with everything that we have, not only through the legislature, but also through the courts. Uh, we were talking about that on the way up, you know, is how, how, how in the world are we going to go ahead and come in and begin to litigate against this, uh, this overreach? Because if we can do that, we can stop it. And so we're looking at doing some of that, uh, even though we have, um, you know, a, a very liberal attorney general at this time. I know that it's going to take uh, it's going to take all of us and we're standing with you. I want to let you know that we hear you. Um, boy, that, that just angers us to be able to hear what you're all going through. I live, uh, I live in the southern part of the state as well. We're only about 60 miles from the border. I was born right there at the southern part. And uh, yes, this is our state and we need to keep it. This is a mining state, farming state. Um, and, you know, we, it's a beautiful state that we can enjoy and we want to keep it that way. Thank you. Just like to echo uh, my colleagues up here, I won't be as verbose as some of them, but uh, four hours in front of me for the, uh, the rest of the night. So uh, thank you for being here. You all who showed up, and I know that m many have left, and it's still a good crowd for a uh, random Monday night uh, on very short notice. And that says a lot about how important this issue is. I think I was somewhere between Colorado Springs and Durango when I got the text message about this and when we pulled up uh, in Durango, I was like, absolutely, I'll be there because uh, it's important. So take the energy, take the fight that you see on our side of the dais and on yours, uh, and let's go ahead and continue this because um, it is about all the things that have been already said up here and so much more. 
uh, we continue to lie down and this continues to happen to us. So let's not lie down anymore. All right. So with that, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I will spend a few dollars on a drive through before I leave <laughs> in your community. So thank you. I too can't thank each and every one of you enough for making the commitment to be down here. The fight you've been fighting, many of you, for many years on different issues like this. But never before, at least in my lifetime, have I seen such a blatant abuse, such a gross abuse of established acts, of the law, of the Constitution. It is just absolutely unreal. The public comment period was a joke, absolute joke, and just unbelievable that, uh, that we're witnessing this. And what hypocrisy that I'm seeing with this administration who wants to set all these clean energy goals and yet takes the very thing that, that gets us there in a, in a very safe and regulated environment. There's no other area in the world that has the type of regulations that the mines do in this area. And so now we're gonna be dependent on countries that could care less. They don't have the regulations that we have. They don't care about the environment and the water and health and safety. What hypocrisy of this administration. And you won't find better stewards anywhere of the land than our ranchers. My family, we're multi-generational farm family in Buckeye. My husband's family has been farming for 96 years now. And so I get it, but gosh, some of you in your sixth and seventh generation, that's just amazing. Your, li your livelihood, your legacy, your heritage is just being ripped out from under you. It is absolutely unacceptable. This is an illegal taking of public and, and private property. And we must oppose it with everything that we have. There's no doubt that rural Arizona is under attack. We see it from the governor's office, see it from the president, and we will not stand silent. We won't stand by and let this happen. And we will continue to fight and stand with you and for you. And um, I just can't, can't thank you enough for, for your courage and for your heart. And um, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you. The protection of property rights and local economies is paramount. Uh, fighting for states' rights, we've been doing that for a long time. This is another federal overreach of taking your rights. Needs to stop. Control of our water, our energy, and the, and the use of property. If they take control of those, the, those three issues, they take it all. We have nothing left. And they are and have been after water. I've been fighting for water, water rights uh, for close to 30 years. Um, we need to stand up. We are standing up for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, for their children. And we need to hang in there together and support the ranching, support the timber industry, support all of our natural resource industries. Uh, it, it takes all of us to do it. Uh, we hear you. We're behind you. Uh, we're a telephone call away. If you need us, we're here. I want to thank you for... Uh, supervisors have been here for a long time today, I understand, and many of you as well. Uh, we have a three-hour drive back to Phoenix and then home from there. Uh, but thank you, colleagues for taking the time and energy for some of you drove yourself. Some of us took a van and, and, and drove together, carpooled. Uh, but it takes us all and we're there for you.
Thank you very much. With that, we, we each, no further business, the House Natural Resource Energy and Water Committee meeting is adjourned. Seeing no further business before us, the Senate Natural Resource Energy and Water Committee is adjourned. and Laura Committee and Senate Enru Committees is now adjourned. <laughs> See you all later. Okay.